get nuts. It's Foul Territory live on a Thursday. Jonesy, Kratz, Kurzinski, Braun, Max Muncy joining us in 25 minutes. Ryan Yarbrough, who I'm so thankful that he is on the recovery trail, will join us from the Kansas City Royals. Took a comebacker to the Dome. Terrible, terrible situation, but he is on his way back. Cannot wait to speak with him. It's been a minute. Jeff Fletcher, who covers... The Angels on an everyday basis has a book out. We'll get into that as well. And uh, almost Father's Day for everyone. So check out the Foul Territory merch, Foul Territory Shop, or FoulTerritoryShow.com. And most importantly, happy birthday, Kratzy. What's good? Let's go. 29 and a half. Oh, man. I'm 43 like a boss. (laughs) I don't Say know it what with your chest. To feel like, but I feel good. You have great skin, Kratzy. Forty-three. Great skin. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's ever told me like that's kind of creepy. Like, no, it's not. Lotion, lotion, no. and skin. Do you know why I say this? Because being around baseball, and also who said it before? One of the writers, then Ken, is like, you walk into a clubhouse and you have like a slightly like thinner beard or something like that, and a player's going to be on you. My thing is with baseball, you're outside in the sun so much. You know, there's some dudes that retire by the time they're in their 40s. Their skin's falling apart because they didn't wear sunscreen. True. But Back. Kratz and I wore masks, so our face was covered most of the time. True. True. And Kratz is probably that weird guy that wore his hat, his scully forward. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> the, weird, is, the weird guy. That is the worst. When guys would do that, I just we, – I played with a guy – Curtis Thigpen, superstar prospect with from Texas with the Blue Jays. He would he would go to catch a pop up, and he would throw his mask off, and somehow he would flip his helmet around so it faced forward as he was going to catch it. And I, it was it was so smooth. It was so, he was super athletic, and I was like, dude, how on earth do you do that? Like I barely can catch the pop up. He's like. You never know. Somebody might be taking a picture, and I got to look good. <laughs> and he was – now, he had nice skin. He was pretty. He still is pretty. He, he doesn't age either, but – But that's like, that's like shit from a movie, though, to have that smoothness it, going. It was so smooth. It was so smooth. You should check you, – you, 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 pick, you pick a pick of Curtis Thigpen, you're going to be like, whoa, he should have been playing shortstop. That face should have been playing shortstop. Sounds like a TikTok. We'll get on it. (laughs) Uh, All right, let's jump right into things right now. Let's charge the damn mound, shall we? Uh, We will start with the Yankees and the Mets. And it's not New York bias. It was a great game. It was fun. And I actually want to start with IKF. Isaiah kiner Falefa is the name, if you're unfamiliar. He's been through it a little bit with the Yanks. He's had his, his slumps. He's had to move positions. But he also stole home. And it it was a real steal of home. It wasn't some double steal action. It was just straight up. No, it was straight. Brooks which, Raley. Wait, which count? Slow. The other one is bull crap. Right. Like the other one, steal. The other one's still and, and here it is. the living crap out of Ooh. Alvarez and Raley. <laughs> <laughs> and and the umpire never, almost killed the umpire too. Almost killed the up. Uh, perfect pitch to do it too. Not that he knew right? it was going to be off, but I mean, Bill you Miller, have no chance on that pitch. Bill Miller almost took that off the face. Man. Almost killed Bill Miller and Billy McKenney. Billy McKenney was like I mean, that ball was at his head. It was a good move by Rayleigh. He, you know, he knew if he hit him, then he'd have to go back to third. But in the face, that was close. Yeah. Kras, uh, did you ever have anybody try and steal home when you were catching? Not once. I had it one time, and I've never been as scared in my life. Coco Chris tried it. Matt Thornton was in the windup, mm-hmm. and he came, and I just heard him yelling. The pitch came, and thank God, I don't know who was hitting, but they didn't swing. And I literally just dove on home plate. Caught it and just fell. And you got him. He was out. But I, I thought he was out by like forever. It was then I saw the replay. It was close. But I literally just caught it and just fell on top of him. I'm like, he's not touching the I'm not gonna be this guy. I don't care what happens. I am fall and I literally just caught it and put my fat ass right on home plate. <laughs> you, think like, you, ta- you tagged him? Or do you yeah, think he was you- out? He slid right into me because he was head first slide. But so I mean I just, you think you tagged him? Like do you No, think no, I knew I tagged no, I tagged him. I just okay. put my chest. I literally put my chest on home plate and tagged him because I'm like, he's not touching the plate. I'm not that. And then I would have done like the, the, have you seen the highlight video, like the college or the minor league guy where he sits like crisscross applesauce, the guy's jumping around. He just sits on home plate with the ball. Yep. And then eventually tags the guy. You haven't seen that? No. You can't, you can't go chasing, you can't no. go chasing Mm-mm. athletic guys around home plate. Mm-mm. You just see sta- Jonesy, 
You see Jonesy coming yeah. in. He's going to do some kind of slither move, and all of a sudden you're just going to be – your chest protector is going to be off. One shin guard is going to be unclipped, and he's going to be safe. And you're like, what happened? Oh, yeah. That's right. Just okay. sit there and wait for him. They'll come to you. they got to come to you eventually. Yep. Yeah, but you have no chance with that pitch from Rayleigh. Oh, no, no, no. 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 no that, that was, was full perfection. panic. Yeah, that was full panic. But why is he in the windup? Oh, that is a good up. question. Because no one's straight like, stole home since 2016? Yeah, I know, but Sean. Like, but full, full windup, like full windup as a lefty. You get the same amount of power from being in the stretch because you get That's a leg it. kick. What's the difference? You get a leg kick. What's the difference? Yeah. I mean, he doesn't need to rush to the plate. Who knows why? No, you can take his luck. You can rock. You do everything you want to do. You don't need to do the whole windup. He deserves that. He deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you saw it, Jonesy, so two things. One, if if you saw that, are you thinking, all right, this is my guy? And two, did you ever try to think about it? I've thought about it, but every time I thought about it, the pitcher switched and they went to a uh, they went to the to the stretch. But I thought about it a couple times, but they went to the stretch. I mean, it has to be a it has to be a lefty hitting. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. Oh yeah. Although when Coco Chris did, it was a righty hitting. I forget who it was. Uh, I think it was Brett Lowry. Brett Lowry, wasn't that his name? Brett Lowry, yeah. yeah. With the Oakland, he, he was Oakland, right? Oh, Oakland and oh, yeah. Toronto. Uh, after we got good. him out, we're like, man, you really, Coco, you really got a lot of faith in Brett Lowry getting the hit here with two outs, <laughs> trying to steal home. I mean, Brett Lowry had his moments. He did. He was Brett talented. Lowry. He was a freak. Yeah, he was a freak. I, like, kind of high ceiling didn't hit Wasn't the ceiling. Wasn't he a ceiling. Blue Jays guy? Blue Jays? Oh, yeah. Blue Jays A's? Traded for White Sox? Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. he was supposed to be better than, you know, I mean, he had a couple moments, but he was supposed he to be better than he was. 12 years in a major league. No, he played 12 years? No, no way. At least, at least 10. He's got 10. Nope. No way. Brent Lowry, no chance. That's my easiest no, no, sorry, lock sorry. of the I'm day. Sorry. Under. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Jed Larry. Oh, Jed Larry. Oh, Jed Larry. Jed Larry, yeah. Jed Larry, yeah. might have, Jed Larry Jed has 12 Larry. years Brent in the Larry's big leagues. Strong. Eight eight of them are on the IL every year. Right. Yeah, he'd he'd bad, have like three bad. months that were good, and then he'd be on the IL for the other four And months. then the other four he was complaining about balls and strikes. And hamstrings. He always he always <laughs> like had a him. hamstring. I Whatever. Like. Nice guy. I got paid. Uh, Brett Lowry, by the way, six years in the bigs. Toronto, bad, then bad. Oakland for a year. Chicago for a year. But no, his this is it. Brett Lowry, who hovered around – League average mark for all seasons besides oh rookie year it was 171 plate appearances but dude raked 293 nine homers 373 OBP 580 slug and you're looking at him and he's got the look he was no, a he big the stocky swag. dude okay. yeah yeah so, UFC I don't know how baseball. we got there but yes no, exactly dude, that's, the, that's the that's the look he goes with don't we fight get that back dude. on track but Brett Lowry yeah. there's so many great stories about Brett Lowry we got to try to have him on he is like. If Red Bull was in a baseball player, like he should have been sponsored by Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, he had some ticks. He had some. I'm telling you, this guy, this guy was. There's some good stories about him, but quick anyway, twitch. I want. I want to talk about the whole Kiner Falefa thing. Like you look up his stats, and you even said it, Scotty. Like, oh, you know, he's had his he's had his stuff, you know, with last year. Yeah, he's having a worse year last year this year than he did last year. The difference is. John Boy Media has stopped talking about him. Everybody stopped talking about him, and he doesn't have the pressure of needing to be the shortstop in New York. All of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, he's a super utility guy. He's such a huge piece. He's the super – they even said the word all-star last night. What? what? Who said that? On the, on the telecast, they said all-star super util- – or all-star utility knife, and then they flashed up his like, last 13 games. No, what? no. They said that uh, it was on ESPN, and I, I didn't. I was watching obviously every you know mixing back and forth, so I watched a lot of the end in terms of listening. I did not hear that. They was, said that was, on the ESPN broadcast. It was his no first way. or second at bat, and they, and I was like, it, it really because per- I was only watching one game, and it perked my ears up. I was like, what? He's a great like you know fit in here, fit in there, plays every position because they were talking about yeah, he could play, he could play catcher. I think it was a. I think it was a slip when they said it, but like he is a quality, he is a quality utility player, but he, he, he can't be the starting shortstop for much. the Yankees. He, he's at OPS plus, right? It's one I use to try and keep it yep. simple here. Okay. Hundreds league average, good stat on ballpark league, whatever, to just yep. factor everything in just offense. Hundreds league average. Ready? 72. 72. 
Well, he was looking. He I know, but I 72 looking. is, that's really low. That's bad. awful. Yeah. That's like AAA that's, level. That's, that's close that's to like should be sent down. BFA. Like By the way, that before we get around. too deep in the weeds, it was Dang. Connor Jackson that was the hitter when Coco Chris tried to steal him. Not oh, Connor loud. Jackson. Connor okay. Jackson. Yep. Yeah. Who had some Diamondbacks time, right? Yeah. He yeah. hit. He Last from the nice. past day. Yeah. yeah so, did. yeah. But it was Connor Jackson. So, I apologize. No. All good. And then the other thing from this game. So, I want to show. Let's show Nimmo. Let's show that walk off. Because also, Nimmo had a bad base running mistake. Oh, that was awful. That. That was I also brutal. put that a little bit. I love Joey Cora. That was on Joey Cora. I had you not send Should've that guy sent him there. there. Yeah. To be honest, there's two outs. You right. The Nimmo's coming through. Nimmo's not even looking. Because what Nimmo's job is on that play is when Nimmo runs around, he's trying to get him to cut it to get him out. Right. Yep. So the run, the go ahead run score. So he actually did it right, but he never. I don't think he ever because Joey sends everybody. But also for Nimmo, like I guess you're running hard, but don't you see that your dude didn't go? Uh, no, yeah, kind of. You look because what I guarantee you, I didn't see Joey. They didn't really show a replay, but I guarantee he was waving him and then er, late. Mm -hmm. So Nimmo sees him going, so he's trying to get him to cut it to draw the throw, which was what he did. Unfortunately, though, he's probably safe too. They did a replay review. It was close. It was it really was close. very close. But they called it out, so they didn't. But he let probably it. was safe, but what Nimmo did was right. It just is unfortunate, Joey. I would have to yell at Joey. Let's show it. Yeah. Let's, let's show that play. Should have gotten a better jump. Nimmo, <laughs> right field, that deep. That sends Bowers way oh, back. Yeah, yeah. Still going back. It's off the wall. Escobar, a slow start at second base. He's being waved in. Here he comes. Nemo does it. And the Mets walk it off. Happy haircut, Francisco Lindor, by the way. <laughs> Kratzy called it. And uh, what was it? What was Eduardo Escobar doing? That ball's off the wall. He's tagging up. What, what that, are we doing? Yeah. Like, what are we uh, doing? One out. Nope. What do we do? You got to get far enough off. You got to get far enough off where you can go back, yeah. right? But you got to get far enough off where if he catches it, you can still go back and tag. He went back. He almost got thrown out of the plate off a ball off the wall. Too many guys. Too many guys are going to tag right now in times when yes, I get it if the guy catches it, but nobody's camped under that ball. Bowers was playing shallow McShallowson to be able to get a Nimmo low liner, and you got to go. You got to go at least. A quarter to a – I mean, not a halfway, but you don't need to tag right there because you get the third with two outs. You know, it's not it's not Little League where guys are, you know, pass balls and wild pitches a lot. Like, you need to be – you need to be able to score. That was that was really close. I didn't think there was going to be any kind of play. If there's – uh, like Grinding. If the center fielder is backing up immediately – again, tough play, not going to say anything about it on center fielder. But if he's backing up immediately and you give a very firm throw – to the second baseman, you could have him out right there. Um, Escobar, good base runner. You, you got to go, like you said, four or five steps off. If he makes a great catch at the wall, you're on third base. Third base is the given in that situation. No outs, yeah, you go back and tag. We know that. But one out, yep. we know you don't go back and tag. But if the, if the center fielder was there and there was two good throws, he could have been out. If he stumbled, he could have been out. What if it's Judge out there? What about I mean, the ball hit the yeah, very right. top of the wall. And no? Judge was probably be playing where uh, Bowers was. Nah, Judge catches everything. Okay, yeah. so he, was so he, he catches Luis it. Rise and he's on third base. Uh, Judge is a good outfield. I understand that. Yeah, he's, he's on third bigger. base. With, he's much yeah, still bigger. on third base. Oh, it doesn't God. matter where he's I'm, at. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> we, one of No, our, you're right, Jonesy. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Sorry, Jonesy. I don't even know what you said. I'm still trying to process Scott saying PCS deal. Judge catches that ball with ease. <laughs> so does Jonesy. Jonesy catches that. Ball. But Jonesy's in center field. Yeah, but if he's in right, he catches that ball. Yeah. He's not. But in center field. Uh, but if I'm he playing that corner. shallow, that's tough. You have to hit at the end. Yeah. It depends on what year you. If you're talking about 2019, I got it. If you talk about Japan, that ball is inside the Parker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, 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 listen, the, I mean, Bowers did nothing wrong on that play. No. The ball, was, the ball no, missed shallow. a home run. I know. The ball literally missed a home run by like this far. And he was playing shallow because if a base hit, he wanted to be able to throw out Escobar on a base hit. So he was in the right spot. I mean, he ran a long way. He got to the wall. The ball hit from, like, me to you away off yes. the top of the wall and the kind of that little corner they have there. And then it ricocheted back. And then who, I don't know who was playing center. I guess IKF maybe came up and chucked it all the way. Didn't he? They threw it all the way home. So, I mean. Escobar is not the world's fastest. No. But he's a good, good dude. He's yeah. Well. Uh, 
I love Escobar. He's one of my favorite personalities. Didn't you, AJ? Yeah. Yeah, I had him when he first came up. We traded him for yeah. Francisco Liriano. He's better than ever now because obviously, yeah, you you have him when he first comes up, and he's he's a walking comedian. He was that when he was a really rookie. as he a rookie, unbelievable. Oh, that's awesome. Because our Terry Ryan called me, who was the GM of the Twins. We traded Liriano for Eduardo Escobar. Straight up, straight up. Pew, pew. I think it was uh, maybe it was some we maybe we threw White Sox threw in someone else. Okay, because we were trying to make a run. Terry Ryan, who drafted me out of high school, calls me and says, "Hey, what do you got on this Escobar kid?" I go, "Listen." One of the best dudes, funniest guys I've ever been around in my whole life. I'm like, you guys got a good one. He's like, thank you. All I need to hear. Click. Hung up. Isn't that tampering? He'd already made the trade. Oh, oh. The trade had already happened. <laughs> <laughs> the trade had already happened. He was going to flip him. Yeah. AJ right, says he's a bad guy. Flip him. Yeah. He was right. awesome. Well, right. If, if he's already there. Yeah, well, no. He just wanted to know because once he made the trade, he was just double checking. Yes. Usually you should do your homework before that. Well, but... I think he knew because he got clearly made the trade. Yes. Uh, all right, let's hit Washington and Houston because because we never talk about the Nationals the whole year. Not much. I know Strasburg. We talked about we talked Strasburg. About. Yeah, we talked about Strasburg. But that's not really a national. No, have we talked Dang about Thomas. anything else? Well, we talked to Dickerson the other day. We talked about some trade possibilities. Yeah, who could be available on the national? Talk side. about bad, bad inning. This inning, this is a goat. Which fuck. one? Yeah, the which, ninth which inning of the game is a goat fuck. Yeah. We're not even. We'll get to the top of the ninth later because I got the another bad beat. The bottom of the goat fucked in the bottom. I know, but the bottom of the ninth. <laughs> I don't know Jason why that's so funny. Home. Anyway, I haven't heard that one from him yet. Yeah, I haven't okay. either. It just it just exploded out of his mouth twice. <laughs> Did, did you watch the top of the ninth inning with Presley? I, I did, I did I mean, watch the whole oh thing. My. You got you got a runner on third. You got a two run lead. The guy hits a one hopper to you. Were you trying to save your ERA? He'd chuck it. Then he chucked it off the friggin' backstop. He would have hit the umpire. Well, well, just get it out. You guys go to first. There would have been two outs and nobody on. They got to hit. Get a, instead, he throws it away. Then the. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> it's you the catcher. I, I think Maldonado was good. You're like, you're not, you're like, fur, you're not expecting, you're like, just what? <laughs> Get, get just get that guy. Walk the first, and then they chuck it, and you're like, "Oh, no one was uh, more than me." Yeah, uh, that was my luck. That was true. Was dying. I'm like, great. Which next All Star closer is going to blow up my freaking? Who did you pick today? <laughs> Stay we'll tuned. To Stay tuned. <laughs> that's Stay who I'm picking tuned. against. No, I went on an over under just to fuck uh, around. Not pick, that I can still get through. All right. Well, let's uh, show Dave Martinez after the bottom of the ninth, and we'll explain. So, because. I even have trouble understanding. This rule's dumb. This is a dumbass rule. It gets talked about every single year. And Dave Martinez says this cost us the game. And he did not hold back. And he brought show and tell. There it is. Right there. Take a good look at it. Is that on the line? I don't think so. I'm over this play. Seriously. They need to fix the rule. If this is what the umpires see, that he's running down the line, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Fix it. We lost the game, and he had nothing to say about it because he can't make the right call. Brutal. Brutal. What was his explanation to you as no. you went out there? He said he, he saw him run down the line. So I said, we lost the game because you, you made the wrong call. I guess. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> and then later, like, he, he didn't backtrack at all, but he was just like, and let me talk about my team for a sec. We did well, and blah, blah, blah. Like, he, he probably quickly realized – Damn it, that's going to cost me five G's or something like that, which is bullshit. You can't, like, you want entertainment in your sport? Let the manager criticize the ump. Who cares? Also, the umps criticize players with the sticky stuff. They'll be like, that's the stickiest shit I've ever felt. They don't get fined for that. Why can't Dave Martinez say what he wants like that? When's the last time you went a day and didn't say sticky stuff? Uh, <laughs> I think Monday. I think Monday. That was the only time this week. <laughs> this year. This some people base, say baseball season. Some people say it's sticky stuff. Someone's got to talk about it. You love sticky stuff. Our show talks about the things that others won't. Now back to Dave Martinez. When's the last time you saw an, a, a manager take a picture, hold it up? This has got to be the first time this has ever happened, and say you suck basically to whoever the home plate umpire was. And if you watch the game live in the replay they showed, first of all, the home plate umpire is his call. So he's watching the catcher make sure he, when he catches it that his foot is on the base, which it was. And then the catcher comes up and fires it. By well, the time he looks up, what happened is the runner actually had veered back into the right spot. So if you watch it live, he starts here and he goes, woo. And then he, when the ball actually hit him, because the ball hit him in the helmet, he was on the base, but he was in the right spot. So by the time the umpire looked up, he had already veered in. 
So it's 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 the worst. It's one of the worst rules in baseball because it's such – as a right-handed hitter, you have to run in fair territory in order to get to the bag. Now, as a lefty, it's easier to get down the line and get outside the line because of the way you start. I, I remember one time – I mean, Toronto. You guys – I don't know if you guys remember. Moises Sierra? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys remember that guy? He's a big yeah. oh, prospect yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he took a swing, strike three, and he – whoo, he hit me in the head with his bat. And the ball got – it was in the dirt. It was like a left-handed slider, and the ball was in the dirt. I went and ran, ran over, and he hit me in the head. And the umpire, usually they call like interference stop. He was in the – between me and the first base, and he was way inside, and I'm like, fuck this. I hit him square in the back as hard as I could. <laughs> out. He's out. I mean, I was so mad. And I, I did it on 100%. I was like, screw this, dude. I mean, he hit me in the – boom. And I just picked it up, and I looked, and I had time. He was way in. He was like in the turf in Toronto. And I just went <laughs> right between his numbers. <laughs> Out. I was like, <laughs> earlier yes. AJ said he never called for anybody to get hit. Well, clearly AJ's hitting people with the That's ball. Umps. That's a chance. <laughs> That's umps. And also, if you hit AJ, he's going to hit back. I Fair. mean, he didn't do it on purpose, but I was just mad because yeah. I was like, normally, because normally head the head umpires, head. you know, crouch when you get hit by a bat, they're like, but dead ball, that runner's out. And the umpire didn't say nothing. I'm like, he hit me in the head. He's like, I don't care. Pick it up. He was inside. I'm like, I know he's going to be out. And if he's not, <laughs> it's totally worth it because there's two outs, nobody on. Right? I mean, I'm talking like, I don't know, he was like 13, like right between the one and the three. And he just goes, hey, well, Azuna's on a lot of lists right now where people don't like the backswing. Remember, mm -hmm. Will Smith was pissed? Yeah. Now that's the answer. And we have Muncie coming on in a few minutes. We can just let him relay the message over to his buddy. What are the chances? What are the chances that this happened? with Davey Martinez in the same first baseline from the World Series in 2019 when Trey Turner got called out for doing almost the exact same thing, except it went the other way for him. That's why he's sick of it. That's what I mean. Like, what are the chances that this is the exact same place? Well, solve it. Sol solve the there problem. Is, the only way you can do it is if you put two bases. Why don't we have two bases? Because this isn't softball. Do you really think that it changes the aesthetics of the game and makes it so like different from what it is now to have two bases? It's the size of two bases. It's stupid. That's stupid. Okay. Well, okay. Fine. Fine. You don't want two bases? Then do then solve it. Okay. This is the one time I'm going to defend hit, the league a, here. Don't make a bad throw. Make AJ, a good throw. Dave or AJ calls me. Hey, this this rule sucks. Okay, AJ, go ahead, fix it. Come up with a make solution. Make a better throw. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think they violated anything here because the throw was not manipulated by the rule that the way I read it is you have to be in the lane. You have to be in the throw. You have to be in a running lane by the time it's created, unless the throw is manipulated because of where you are. You follow what I'm saying? Like you don't have to veer into that. If it hits you like AJ did, then you're out. Or if the guy has to over, – he overthrows it because you're in that lane. You're outside of the running lane, and he overthrows it because he doesn't have a lane to throw it in, then the umpire can call you out. But in this case, it was as he hits the base, which is no longer in the non-running lane, running lane. That's how I, that's how I read, read the rule. So, you know, the whole thing of is the home plate is in fair territory. First base is in fair territory. They tell you to run in foul territory. Because if you run in fair territory, you get hit. You're out. The line is in foul territory. Does that make any sense? No, you're no, right. It's a dumb rule. It's a dumb rule. It, like, you, everything's in fair territory, but they say run in foul territory. Like you said, AJ, as right hand as a right-hander, taking a swing, your momentum takes you this way towards the pitcher, then you veer off. Then You, you know, again, you're supposed to get to the – the foul territory, the lane, running lane, by time it, the chalk is supposed to be there. But you're supposed to get to fair. The, the point is to get to the bag as quick as possible, which is a straight point. So I'm supposed to veer off. It's always that. That that, that play is always one of the biggest conversations in the game. If two bases ain't going to do it. Like you said, that's, I think that's stupid. Yeah, that's what you – but I don't know. I mean, the first base when you six five, reach out this far, <laughs> inside, inside, in, 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 like they yep. used to say. Back Make a better day. throw. Make <laughs> a better throw. throw. But I, but it's like two things are in fair, but they tell you to run in foul. It, 
It's an oxymoron in the game. Makes no sense. Foul pole is a fair ball. Fair ball. Chick fil A makes it up. Make, Chick fil A loves it though. <laughs> the foul pole. Because like oh. every big league stadium has the Chick fil A everywhere here, foul pole. I, I love Chick fil A. <laughs> I love every time. Oh good. We have back in two weeks we get Chick fil A. Yum. You love every time we have to talk about Felter. Well, you hear, I just, someone else mentioned this in our show meeting one of the days. It's like, you can't kick it now. I hear it in games every day. And I'm just like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Checks in the mail. Thank you. Yep. I'll be here all day. Me okay. And AJ played in foul territory <laughs> our whole career. That's right. Yeah. That's why we uh, recruited you. Okay. I want to do some shout outs because I think Muncie is joining us soon. So, number one, because we didn't really talk about him much what was it yesterday or the day before we shouted out aaron hicks the other redemption story and kratz i wanted to give you at least 30 seconds to jump this in there so the padres won again they're hot tatis homered machado homered soto apo cruz waka has been dominant lately actually big story but number one for the padres the new spark plug no one wanted gary sanchez except for the padres and eric kratz and everyone else was wrong I agree. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's my birthday. I appreciate that gift of <laughs> letting me talk about my El Gary. And look, like, let's let's also pump the brakes. As much as I would say, mm -hmm. yes, I want Gary Sanchez. I'm not calling for him to be an all-star. I'm not calling for him to get tens of millions of dollars of multi-year deal. I'm just saying, at the beginning of the year, Gary Sanchez should have had a job on a big league team. And at the time when we were talking about it, I had a whole, like, I had my whole Gary Sanchez spreadsheet up. I don't have it right now, but I know this guy is the guy that you need behind the dish and his defense isn't as atrocious as the New York media and then the, you know, the surrounding people who come in just for one game to call the game and they're like, oh, Gary Sanchez this, pass ball that. You know, it's not as bad as everybody makes it out to be. Mm -hmm. Said the same thing. Uh, being a big Padres fan, he fits perfect there. Um, he doesn't have to be the superstar. He gets to wear a nice, big, thick beard. Uh, he's got other superstar third baseman. I mean, uh, well, his third baseman and other, but other Dominican guys around him, other Latin guys, and he can be comfortable. Again, like you said, I'm not calling for him to be an all star, but it's it's a hell of a Hell of a way to, I think, go to understanding that, you know, this could be. If once you start bouncing around taking minor league deals, it's a, it's an indication that this could be it. Teams are not high on you as like they once were. You're okay if we didn't sign this guy, this guy, this guy. Okay, we'll give you that chance. And if you make it, cool. You tear up Triple A. This could be his like real chance again to be a MLB starter. Like you said, he should be on a team. But this could be that. Uh, the opportunity on a very on a contending team with high expectations and can add a lot of thump because the catching position has not been offensively good this year. So he could be a big spark plug for the Padres, especially at the bottom of that lineup. But again, he's not going to hit six home runs every 13, 14 games. But to add some offense and some thump at the bottom of that lineup can be very, very potent. It helps. It lengthens it, it, it if he's hitting like this. I mean, I know Kratz loves him, but I mean – he ain't good. He ain't good defensively. I mean, he's okay. Not. Okay, but what isn't what isn't good? So, so I want I want that. Well, I mean, how many? I mean, clank, 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 clank. Just because he can throw a ball hard doesn't mean he's a good thrower. Okay, okay. throw the ball in the air. Stop throwing it on the ground. Clank, 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 <laughs> clank, clank. So clank, you're saying clank, you're clank. saying he you, you're saying he boxes balls back there. He boxes a lot of balls. And, and I'm, what? That's and, from and, a guy that watches a lot of catchers. And, I, and that's why, and that's why I want to. That's why I want to talk about this because you you watch it because you have the experience back there. What? So explain that to me. So are you saying he has a lot of pass balls? Are you he, saying he did for a while? He's gotten better at that, but he's also the one knee for him for me doesn't work because he doesn't move well enough to be on one knee. Agreed. So he has a hard time on one knee. A lot of Completely balls go right. past him. That was the thing in Minnesota. Like when he was in Minnesota, I asked Rocco. I said, "How's Gary?" He's like, "He's not as bad as we thought." First of all, if the manager says he's not as bad as we thought, mm -hmm. that means they really thought you sucked because they would, he would be like, oh, he's been good, but he's, he's not as bad as we thought he was going to be. Yeah. Right? The fastballs stand out more in New York. Uh, well, if everything stands out more yeah. in New York. But the thing is, is 
when are they coming? And he missed a lot in big situations. And I think that's why in New York it got – once it started, mm -hmm. but then everyone thought, oh, he's going to go to Minnesota and he's going to be back. Because there's not really a lot of pressure. I play no. in Minnesota. There's not really a lot in Minnesota. I mean, you got like two beat writers and whatever. It's a great place. It didn't get better. And his defense got a little better because there wasn't as much focus on it. But everyone was expecting him to go and just go bang, 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 bang. Look, this dude's hitting 30 homers again. And that never came back. And then he went, you know, he was at the Mets this year for what, three games, two games, whatever it was. Yeah, two minutes. And then he went, now he's in the Padres, which is great. Listen, I hope he does great. But to, to come on here and and say, you know, he's good defensively would be like saying, you know, I don't know. But the, wow. it's a, it's, he wasn't – he's not been hurting them the last couple no, of weeks. No, no, no. Listen, you know why? He's because, been a big help. Because you know what the key is? What? He's knocking in more than he's letting in. Right, exactly. And if you knock in more than you let in, they'll ignore some other not stuff. The, it's you not know, the first you know, offensive catcher. It's not like he can't play the position. No, 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 not at all. But here's yeah. the thing. It's like Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza, if we talk to him, he'll say, I mean, I wasn't the best catcher in the world. Mm -hmm. he, he was okay. Yep. But you know what he could do? Rake. Exactly. exactly. He could hit bombs. And you know when the defensive problems in New York started coming up more? When he stopped hitting all the freaking home runs. Yeah, of course. That's when you're going to start talking about it. Totally. So when he was going bang, 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 hitting 30 homers, they were like, yeah, oh, we don't really – yeah, it's Gary. He's going to hit 30. But the crowd's shaking his head like, no. All right, well, guess not, what? Go ahead. You got to bring Muncie in. Yeah. Dang it. We, I got to cut off my Gary rant again. Just hold it. Hold it. Hold it. And we'll get I'll to it. it. Right? <laughs> Can be your pop-off you. tomorrow. Thank you. True. Dude who rakes joining us right now is Max Absolutely Muncie rakes. of the Dodgers. You got the whole crew today, Max. How you feeling first off, dude? Uh, I feel pretty good. Um, I think there was a, if you're referring to my hamstring, I think there yeah. was a goof with the uh, the media yesterday. It's not, it's not a grade two. Um, it's, it's just a low grade. So hopefully we're going to be back. Uh, um, who, who knows when, but, uh, hopefully it's, it's sooner rather than later. Wait, let's call out who, who threw that out there? Who misreported the, the info here? That's good news. It's not as bad as what they're saying. Basically. I have no idea. Um, is, I think it's one of those things where maybe someone misheard something and that's all it was, but, uh, uh, yeah, if it was a grade two, you're looking at, you know, a month, two months. Uh, and, uh, thankfully that's yeah. not what I'm looking at right now. I did see that. I saw grade two and they're like, but not IL. And I was like, mm, what? How many grades are there? <laughs> There's three, right? Three. There's three. Yeah. Yeah. What grade one's basically a strain. Grade two is like a pole and grade three is there's a tear in there. All right. Great. So that's good news. Okay. So, so what, how did you do it? Cause I know, I know I'm interested in how you get graded. <laughs> Uh, PG, PG grade you. PG. <laughs> that's for uh, that's for the doctors that make all the money to to tell you. So you get a you go and get an MRI. Yeah. You lay in the tube and they. And yeah, it's so yeah. The, the tube is like right here. <laughs> they're like, hey, yeah, relax. Little, a, little, uh, a little claustrophobic in there. It's not. It's not the most comfortable thing in the world. No. Yeah. Okay. I put headphones in when I've been. Yeah, in I go to I go to sleep when I've had them. Yeah. The, Max, how did you did it running? I'm assuming. Yeah, it was uh, my last at bat on uh, our day game in Philly. Um, was running down the line. My last three steps kind of just felt a grab, and uh, um, they just didn't get it. I thought maybe it'd be better the next day, and it just didn't get better. Okay, I'm going to give you some advice as a guy that was slow. Also, you don't have to run 100, percent okay? Especially when you hit like a ground ball to second, because there's about a 99.9 .9 chance you're going to be out anyways. You know, you give it the false three steps, and then you see the guy catch it because you hit the ball so hard, and he's lobbing it over there. Just, okay, I'm going to just take it, it easy. Was, uh, no, no, nobody's it Bryce Harper and can run 100% all the time, okay? <laughs> Even he on, shuts it, was, it down. It was, it was bases loaded, no outs. I was trying to stay out of double play, man. Come oh, on. see, that's when you find out That's when you find out how fast somebody is because they want that RBI, <laughs> right? So you want to see how fast the dude is? First and third, one out, they hit a ground ball. You want to? That's how you'll see how fast oh, yeah. the dude is. Because they're busting their ass to get that RBI. Also, also, I got, I got, I got to call you out, man. I got to call you out. Give me some credit. I'm above average uh, sprint speed. So, come are on. you? I was just gonna say, yeah. Okay, okay. my bad, my bad. Look it up. Look at this. Yeah. Hey, AJ. We AJ's are looking on, it up. He was hating. He was hating on my. No, guy, he wasn't. Gary no, Sanchez. I was giving him advice. I was trying to help him. I want him back on the field. <laughs> no, I, I was triggered when I heard that. I wanted to go deep. Forget I know. Beat down said, a ground ball. As a, fellow, as a fellow slow dude. Oh, uh, no, well, no, no. okay. You, you can, that's fine. Make fun. This slow. dude can hop around. <laughs> that was slow shit. He, he could play multiple positions in the he, infield. And he goes deep. Yeah. 
Sprint speed. Hold on. Uh, 51%. Yeah. He's, got he's got a bag already this year. Does I he? need a second one as soon as you get back healthy, though. Just saying. Yeah, well, we, we might we might pump the brakes on that one. Maybe See, the now he's back right. to being a slow guy. Now he's back to being a slow guy. No more stolen bases. Hey, I, hey, I, I'm, a, I'm above average sprint speed, but you get me a, you get me a, in a stolen base situation, we'll we'll, we'll say I'm slow. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh wait, here we go. Sprint speed. How do you know? What... Uh, I'll show you. Let okay. Adam go. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Hey Max. Hey, Max, how you been, baby? I just want to ask, man, how's it been being a, like now you're every day back at third base, literally every day. Where you mix, you moved around second, first. Third, when, when JT was out, now he's gone. Like now the everyday third baseman, how has that been? I mean, it's obviously better going forward for a free agency and all that kind of stuff. But how has it been physically? Um, it, it's nice. It's nice for me. It's um, being able to kind of settle into one spot instead of, you know, every day you show up, you know, you didn't know where you're going to be at. You just you knew you were going to be in the lineup, but you didn't know what position you're going to be at. It's kind of nice to be able to just know I can focus on doing my stuff at one position every single day. It's uh, um yeah, it's been it's kind of been uh uh yeah, I mean it's it's just been it's just been nice. It's um you know, you have one spot going forward. I always ask this anytime somebody somebody comes on that's hurt, are you a jerk when you're hurt? Like are you like a bad bad dad, bad husband? Are you a bad like <laughs> bad teammate? Uh I hope not. I mean You hope uh, not. I mean let's be honest. Let's be honest. I mean, I'm in the dugout for the whole game. I know a lot of other people that get hurt don't even come to the field. So, uh, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm in, I'd am in. i say I'm a good teammate because I'm in the dugout the whole game, yeah. Yeah, well, that's good. That's how, good. How, how bored do you get, though? You got you, you get bored. Let's, I mean, you get bored. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's not it's not fun. But, you know, it, yeah, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. Okay, Max, so I want to ask you about – a story that I just heard from AJ because from me, um, yes, dude, he's already mad at me. Don't don't make him. No, mad no, it's a good. This is this is fun. <laughs> this is good, clean fun. So, so right. we were talking about here. I got two part question. One, did you see the rant from Dave Martinez, which included show and tell photo, the call out the uh, baseline situation? Um, I think I saw something on it, but I didn't see the actual thing. No. Okay, the rant was great, but no, the part I wanted to ask with you was, AJ got hit by a backswing back in the day by Moises Sierra. You tell it. So I got hit. Moises Sierra, he, you probably don't even know who he is. He was a big prospect with the Blue Jays. He he whacked me in the head with his backswing. Ball was in the dirt. It was left-handed slider. He's a right-handed hitter. I, I go over, pick it up. Normally the umpire's like, all right, the ball's dead. He's out. He hit him with the, the umpire doesn't call it. So he's running inside. So I pick up the ball and I just go, whoop. Hit him square in the back as hard as I could throw it. He was out, nowhere, you know, inning over, you're out. Did it on purpose, 100% did it on purpose. Not even going to try and lie. I think what he's going to say is, have you ever hit one and have you ever gotten hit? I don't no, know. No, I was going to say, Will Smith got smashed oh, by Marcel Azuna. Yeah, that was, a, that was a scary one for us because Will's already dealing with some concussion stuff this year and uh, – um, it wasn't like it was just kind of like the the end of the bat, the tip of the bat. I mean, that was like uh, if 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 Will's head was the ball, that was borderline a double down the line. Um, I mean, he got he got straight barrel on his head, and so that was kind of a scary one for us. Now, what about Scott has this brilliant idea because the the play was yeah, where the runner I came the runner was inside and, and the ball hit him in the head, and he was called safe and not. You broke your wrist a couple years ago on that same play, right? And missed playoff time, 21 at yeah. 21? Yeah, it was the, the last game of 21, yeah. Um, run it, are guy you in running favor the line of, was in the grass. Are you in favor of putting another base like softball where the runner has to run outside and touch that base? How do, um, how do we fix this problem? I don't know. I mean, the thing is, even if you put another base out there, guys are still going to run to the inside. Uh, that's just what they're going to do. Um, I don't know that another base would solve that issue. Um, I think it just comes down to whether or not the guy running down the line is angry. Um, you know, if he's, if he's angry, he's trying to get inside, block the throw, maybe get on the bag, and he doesn't care who he takes out in the process. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things. You hit, you hit the little squibber off the end of the bat or you strike out, you know, you're, you're not happy about it. So... How can I get back at these guys? I'm going to get inside the line, cause some, cause some damage. 
You feel like you feel like you can tell when some dude's angry running down there, like making noise, or just based on like ah, they just <laughs> dribble the ball. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of just a guessing game when it comes to that. But it's um, I do know. I mean, like for righties, I know sometimes the way they come out of the box, they just come out straight into the grass, and then it takes them a long time to get back into the line. Um, but yeah, it's I don't know what the solution is to that problem. I mean, you just tell people don't run on the grass, but obviously no one listens to that. Well, because aren't you you're told as a base runner, and and, and I and whenever you get like in a rundown or the say you're the runner on first and there's a double play hit to you, and you're gonna come inside, you're told as the base runner to run inside, right? And run right at the second baseman to make your throw more difficult. Or if you're in a in a rundown, you run right at the guy to try to make the throw harder. So at home plate, when you're running to first, the catcher's behind you, you're thinking, Well, watch this, I'm gonna run at the first baseman way inside, and it makes the throw more difficult. But if you were told yeah. you have to run to a base on the outside, maybe they would do that. I don't know. Yeah, that is interesting know. that it, at every other base you're allowed to do that, just not running to first. That, that it's kind of that that is a weird one. I think hey, it look, I think it looked okay. great. I think it looked great if you were just allowed to run down the first baseline, like. Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, I think you'd probably see a lot more people doing what AJ did and just start drawing them in the back. Just. <laughs> Uh, you, you, Max, what if they were like a, a loud props? You could have like a squirt gun as you're running, <laughs> squirt the first baseman as you're running, throw firecrackers. Basketball? No, you know I didn't do that movie either. I mean, you, I mean, you could go, you could go like old school playground days. You know, if if the guy is running inside and and you drill him, it's an automatic out. You know, uh, yeah, uh, peg. peg, yeah, pegs are in. Love that, Max. I I want to ask you about a guy on the other side in last night's game against the White Sox. So. A little bit of a cult hero. By the way, Chicago. thank you for letting them win a game. I appreciate it as a White Sox. Oh, thank you, yeah. Max. I really it's been tough times for the Sox, trust <laughs> me. But Jake Berger's a great story. I've been learning more about him, and he definitely, definitely thought about quitting. He's been through some brutal injuries. Apparently, his parents talked him out of retiring early, and now he's raking, and White Sox fans are calling for him to be their all-star. Do you – find like some happiness in seeing a story like that because of your story to get to where you are because I don't know if you guys spoke but I'm sure he looks up to someone like you uh, you know I, I absolutely enjoy, enjoy it it's uh you know this this game is so hard and it it there's so many issues with it mentally that it causes people and to see someone be able to come out of, of the other side um you know that's 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 a story that I'm always going to root for and it's uh um, you know, just like you said, having gone through it myself, I know how, how difficult it can be and how hard it can be. And so it just, uh, um, you know, to see another person have that kind of success, it's, uh, it's a really cool story. And it's definitely someone that I'm always going to root for. I want to ask about your man, Mook. How special is he? Going just playing, I mean, best right fielder in the game, but now playing dibbling in the infield, some shortstop. How special is he on a day-to-day basis? The leadoff hitter, the catalyst, he gets the, the ship going. Just how special is he on a day-to-day basis? I mean, yeah, you almost I, you almost have to like uh, be more specific about what you're talking about because everything he does, he's special at it. It's crazy. Got bowls of 300. He can dunk a basketball. He can throw a football 70 yards, whatever it is. I mean, you just 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 throw something out there for the guy to do, and he's he's probably the best at it. So it's uh yeah, he got to be a little bit more specific sometimes when you talk when you talk about Mook. It's crazy. It's uh. <laughs> Uh, you know, the guy, the guy is special. That's for sure. He's a great human on top of that. You know, everyone loves him. He's a good teammate. He's, he's fun to be around. He just gets things going. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's been, you, when you play, when you've pl- uh, played against them, you, you kind of, you know, you see some things, but when you get to play with them every day, you realize just how special of a talent he is and how special of a human being he is. Would it be cooler to be Freddie Freeman for a week or Mookie Betts for a day? <laughs> Oh man, I don't know. That's a. Uh, I I think for me, I would go with the Freddie Freeman because if you're Mookie for a day, that's a lot of stuff you got to cr- you got to cram into one day. That'd be an exhausting day. That's, uh, <laughs> right? if, cool if, you're Freeman, if you're Freddie Freeman for a week, then you at least have some time you can spread it out. But yeah, if you're Mook for a day, you got to go to the bowling alley in the morning. You got to. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you got to do a lot of stuff throughout the day. That'd be an exhausting day, but I mean, it would be equally as fun. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> has, has Freddie brought his dad around yet, Fred? Absolutely, yeah. Is he giving him? Is he still teaching? Like when Freddie goes like oh for two, his dad's like always showed up the next day, and he's like okay, 
we're going to do a hitting lesson with his Clearly dad. it works. Uh, 100% it works. It was weird. So every time uh, he before hasn't, we did um Yeah, we, we've all we've all seen him, but he hasn't brought him down into the clubhouse or anything, no, but uh, we'll be in the cage and Freddie will talk about uh, I talked to my dad. He said I need to start doing this and then he'll just do the same drills and he just rakes, but uh Yeah. Yeah, Fred, Freddie's Freddie's great. His 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 routine in the cage is is great. It's uh, uh, I mean, you know, it's just it's so simple and uh, it just works for him. He we would he would struggle when I was with the Braves with him for two years. He'd be struggling every time right before he went to L.A. He'd be like, "Oh, for 15? He's like, "Don't worry, Dad's gonna be there when we get to L.A." First you said day. that. Oh, yeah. every time. Does he like laugh about it? Yeah, and yeah. then we go to L.A. His dad be there and. He'd, I'm like, dang, dude! Like, what is your dad telling you? So he just, you know, he just watches. He's watching me my whole life. He just knows exactly what to tell me. He should give lessons. He does to Freddie. I know, but like other hitters <laughs> should go up and be like, "Yo, I tried, Fred. What do you see? He, you I tried." It's Canadian. He doesn't doesn't work. Well. No. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, what he what he does doesn't really work for anyone else because you know we have, we have our hitters meetings. We talk about what the approach is going to be off the pitcher, and Freddie gives the exact same answer to every every single day. Get a strike, hit it to left field. Hey, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, eat and get your elbow back. Get your back elbow up as high as you can get. It. Higher, higher. Yeah. Then drop it and swing straight up, and somehow you hit. You hit balls. Everything. Really yeah, it's yeah. unbelievable. Everything. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Well, that's why he's his personal coach. No, he's awesome. It's a good question from uh, one of our interns, Jack. What's something that Muncie is better than Mookie at? Oh. <laughs> uh, I think we stumped him. Uh oh. I mean, I can hit the I can hit the ball farther than him in, in batting yeah. practice. I know that. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. That counts. Uh, if, we, that if, we go, count. if we if we go another sport, I I I could probably tackle better than he could for football. There you go. Were you a big Were you a football guy growing up? Yeah, I was a middle linebacker. Ah. Uh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Golf. Uh, Mooks probably got me in golf too. <laughs> <laughs> so, question one more on, on Mooks. Oh, so, oh, yeah, yeah. I, could, I could maybe I could maybe get him with that. There, yeah, there you go, there you go. Yeah, there it is. Yes. So in Arizona, obviously, it's been a nice story there for the Diamondbacks. They're going to be fun to watch in this division against you guys. Um, Corbin Carroll's been incredible. He's looking like an early rookie of the year candidate, might even mess around and be an MVP candidate, depending on how some other guys fare. They're saying there are, and I heard this from Tori Labello himself too, uh, some Mookie Betts comps in his game. Because like you said, there's not much that the dude doesn't do well. Have you seen any of Corbin and see any Mookie in him? And if you spoke to Corbin, what would you say for him to reach that kind of ceiling? What should he do? I mean, the answer I like to give anybody is just be yourself. You know, the second you try to be anyone else, then it's a uh, uh, you, you know, you start messing with things. And I think, you know, he's already reached the level he's been at being himself. And that's obviously an extremely high level. And it's looking like it might be, you know, a top level in the game. And so, you know, the best advice I'd ever give anybody is just be yourself. If, if you're get, if you're reaching that level of being yourself already, then the only thing you need to do is keep improving on being yourself. Um, I, you know, he's, he's, he's been really fun to watch. It's incredible how fast he is and um, the way he plays the game. It's, uh, uh, you know, I feel like every time we turn on the TV, it's some highlight that Corbin Carroll's doing. And it's, uh, you know, it's been, it, it's, 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 it's fun to watch. It's uh they're going to be a tough team to beat down the stretch. Um, you know, we're going to, have to see what we can get going, but uh, yeah, he's 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 a special talent. Is is that what you did, Max? Because if people that don't know your story, you obviously struggled, and then with Oakland DFA, get to the Dodgers, become an All Star, a great player that you are. Were you, did you get away from being yourself? And then how did you get back to what you are now? If that's what happened? No, I think mine was more uh, dealing with a lot of mental stuff. Um, you know, mine was more just kind of I've reached the the top level of the sport I play and I wasn't having any fun doing it. Um, you know, so for me, it was more kind of realizing my love for the game of baseball and dealing with the depression that I was going through of, you know, every day I show up to the field, I didn't want to be there. Um, even though I had reached the big leagues, it was kind of just uh, uh, kind of a different story for me. What? 
I don't want to get too deep, but what was the turnaround? Was it because because I, I, I listen? I, I, to me, this is all interest is really interesting because I never really went through that. So and I don't and if you don't want to talk about it, I totally get it. But how what was it that what was it that you didn't was it the pressure was it the expectations and you were just like man this is hard and then what changed because now when I watch you it looks like you're having the time of your life every time you're on the field yeah I think uh it was the it was a combination of a lot of things you know it was um just you you reach the big leagues um you know it was kind of a bad club club uh, clubhouse culture that we had had there um you know there was a lot of guys I loved on that team uh, and then just the way I was handled by the organization, um, you know, there's a lot of miscommunication between me and the front office and then the front office and the coaches in the minor leagues. And there was a lot of things that had happened where it was kind of like, you know, it just you you saw the business of it and you saw how everything was ran and it kind of just it took it out of me. Um, and then the, the turnaround for me was sitting on the couch at home and you watch you know, all your friends get called out on the line on opening day and realizing, Hey, maybe I still want to, you know, try to play. And you go to the local high school and the kids are out there playing and, you know, they're just, they don't, they don't really have any worries. They're just out there having fun. And, you know, just knowing that that's how it used to be for me. I used to love being out there on the field. It didn't matter whether I had a good game or a bad game, you're out on the field, just having a good time. And so just trying to get back to that, that was kind of the turnaround for me was just whether I had good games or bad games to, to smile and be out there on the field and enjoy it. And that was when my turnaround happened, really. Was it John Fisher? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he had anything to do with it, but yeah. <laughs> he's, he's the man of the week. I had to do it. Okay. You're not the only one that had tough times in Oakland, right? Like that story is, is wild. And what have you thought about it um, this past week? The reverse boycott was incredible. And it was covered so well on social media by fans. I'm sure, I mean, every baseball player could appreciate, because you guys love fans, right? You can appreciate what's going down there for them to show that it's a city that cares and these are real human beings that are getting their team taken away. Yeah, for me, you know, it's it's a real tough one for me because I know when I was there, I didn't have the best time and everything, but the, the Oakland fans are very – very diehard um you know i know we they don't get a ton of fans a lot but when they do you know it's arguably one of the best atmospheres in all of baseball when they're able when they're able to get 20 30 thousand people in that stadium it is an absolutely wild atmosphere um there's really not anything else like it and so just to see that the team get taken away from those fans is uh you know that's a it's a it's a tough one um and i don't i mean it's just it, yeah, it's it's hard to really go into it without bashing the organization too bad, and I don't like doing that. So it's, uh, um, <laughs> it's okay. But I mean, I mean, you just look at all the players that they've had over the last several years that they just let walk or not even pay, and you know, you could you could literally field an all star team with the amount of players they had if they just would have kept them. If you're talking to if you're talking to a minor league guy right now that just got called up and made the big leagues and is like, man, this isn't exactly what I thought. Whether he's with Oakland, whether he's with any of the other teams that are struggling, what would you tell them? What would you tell them? Like, Hey, I was feeling, I was feeling this, like I was going to the field. Like, I don't even know if I want to be here. And this is like the, where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. It's, you got to find a way, you know, you, you just, you got to find a way to, to, to bring out your love for the game again and, and realize why you're there and why you're playing the game. Um, you know, you're doing it because it's fun. You're doing it because it's what you've been doing your whole life. And it's, 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 uh, um, you know, you're, you're doing it for me, you know, for me, it was, you're doing it because it's all, you know, it's, it's, it's just what you love doing. And, um, you know, obviously the, obviously winning the game is the whole reason we play. Um, but if you're, if you're able to go out there and have the attitude that just do whatever you can to help the team win and you can pass that off onto other teammates and suddenly you start getting a group buying into that and then you get a culture buying into that. And hey, you may not make the playoffs, but you're going to start having some fun out there with the guys. And you, you know, you just got to you got to find a way to make it fun with your teammates and keep the you know keep the culture as light as possible. And you know, there's there's so many different ways to do that. Um, it, and it's to me, that's what I tell them. It's all about. You got to find a way to make it fun with you and your teammates, even if you're not winning. 
Max, one more for you. Bobby Miller needs more attention. I can't believe I'm saying this because it's L.A. It's not like it's a small market, but we've had actually a lot of fans saying, hey, you guys got to talk about Bobby Miller more. We did a little bit the other day. Just give me one, one thing you've noticed on, off the field, whatever it is. Dude is incredible right now on the mound. And I love the comment from your skip, Dave Roberts, who said he's even better now, like stuff, performance, execution, than he was in the minor leagues five minutes ago. He... Uh... I, and I, th I personally think this is a big compliment. He reminds me a ton of Walker Bueller when he first came up. Uh, you know, it's the attitude is I'm getting you out. I don't care who you are. I'm going to throw my stuff by you. I'm going to make my pitch and it's not going to matter because I'm getting you out. My stuff is better. Um, you know, that's kind of the attitude he's bringing out there on the mound. And it's uh, it's really fun to watch. He's got a lot of, uh, um, you know, he's got a lot of FU in him. That's for sure. Um, I think uh, I don't remember what game it was, but. Uh, I think he walked someone on four pitches and the guy that uh, he auto took, he auto took three Oh and he did something weird. And so Bobby just stared him down the whole way to first base. And we, we're all out on the field kind of like, Hey, what's this guy doing? But then at the end of the day, you kind of appreciate it. You're like, man, this guy, he, he wants to get after you. He wants to get you out. He doesn't care. Um, and so it just, it's, it's a lot like Walker Bueller. And that to me, that's a very big compliment because Walker is one of the best pitchers in the game. And um, you know, it's definitely someone that, if you're being compared to, I think it's a very big compliment. Since he's a rookie, you have to give us something that you're like, dude, like you can't be doing that. Like what's his, <laughs> what's his thing? Has he had a sing on the bus or like, what's his, what's his rookie thing? Oh man. You know, he's, he's been, uh, he's, he's been holding it together pretty good. Uh, he, he, he's passed all of his, uh, his, his tests on the bus so far. Um, did he sing? I think uh, I think his I think for well for me maybe his fashion's a little uh, a little questionable, but uh, um, I think uh, if I remember correctly, he had like a bright red suit on when he got drafted. I think that's I think that's what he was wearing. Um, yeah, his fashion might be a little questionable, but you know that that that's him. <laughs> that's his style, and he doesn't care. And that that again goes into why we're liking him so far because he doesn't care what anyone says. He's going to do what he feels. Okay, we're going to look into that. I like it. Well, <laughs> we're, sure. We've already got the, the social media staff looking yeah. into the uh, it, suit. The it draft doesn't hurt suit. when you can pitch the way Bobby Miller no. does, too. He's Oof. ridiculous right he, now. Yeah, yeah like when you're Chris sitting 100, it's, we're not it's pretty nice. Me. Yeah, and that thing that's that, that thing moves. That's mm -hmm. some, not flat at all with that heater. No. No. He's, he's, a, he's a big man, too. He's a big man. Yeah. Yeah, he's been fun to watch. Pitches again on Saturday. I'll, I'll be locked in on it. Max, great to talk to you, man. Get back on the field soon. We'll go crush the media and tell them leave Max alone and you don't know your grade <laughs> ones, twos, and threes. <laughs> we'll see you on the field in a few days, all right? All right, sounds great to me. Right. Cheers, man. We'll see you soon. Max Muncy of the LA Dodgers joining us on FT Live. Do you ever have a media guy or girl um, miss report one of your – I know I know you haven't hit the IL, but I'm saying like – You've taken. You've had injuries. Anyone ever misreport something, or just in general in your life, where they put something out there and it was like complete bullshit? Yeah, I mean, it's called the internet. Yeah, but like a legit writer, <laughs> not like a not like a Twitter troll. Uh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, yes. I knew you'd have yeah. that. <laughs> uh, what was? Gosh, what was Gordon needs? Yeah, who the guy Boston from Boston writer? writer? Yeah, he once put out that I was on steroids. And no. I'm like, and I call, and I had my agent called him. Was like, retracted or we're suing your ass. And then yeah, of course the time. article is huge. And then the retraction was like, yay big. No way. You wrote steroids. Mm -hmm. He wrote a whole article about he, you. Do do something. It wasn't a, just about me, but it was about. It was in 2012 when I hit a bunch of homers that year, and so people. Were, it, there was like a rumor that oh, it was 35. All of a sudden you're on steroids, and he wrote an article, and I, I was like. Screw you, dude. Like, I'll sue your ass. My agent called and he retracted it. Did he apologize to you personally? No. no, no. Oh, that's no. a bitch move. Not even a phone call? That's brutal. No. Oh, my gosh. I was, that was, I was so pissed. That used to be the thing. Like, you see, like, Adam Frazier, you know, he's got, like, more home runs now already than he did last year. Guys would just be like, oh, probably juicing. Right. So, especially if you hit, you know, 35 years old. God forbid somebody like actually works out and stays healthy and continues to improve. Like, no, everybody was everybody was guilty until proven innocent. True.
That I was is pissed. Good. I was pissed. Uh, I knew you'd There's have a lot a story of stories. That, not a bad that, story today that I don't know. Wow. Really tell. Well, that's why we have you every day. We got to unload. Jeez. All right. Not tomorrow. That's two. Yeah, tomorrow <laughs> no, you got Not tomorrow. Tomorrow okay. I got stuff to do. FT Live continues with our next guest. Ryan Yarborough of the Kansas City Royals joins us right now. And hey, let's tap it up. He's back. Dude, great to see you. I know you've been through a lot. We've been thinking about you. We've spoken about you a couple of times. Obviously, it's been a minute since we spoke and you dealt with the comebacker and just a, a brutal injury, but you look great. I know you're already back um, on the rehab process to get back on the field. Ryan, how you doing, man? No, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, definitely been missing talking to you guys. Uh, I'm in at the beautiful residence inn here in Surprise, Arizona, so uh, <laughs> de- definitely uh, good to be back and uh, the face hitters for the first time yesterday, so uh, we're trending in the right direction, which is really exciting. Was that – strange was that scary was that what what was your emotions i know it wasn't a game but still you're facing what did you have a screen in front of you what what was it like when you took them out and there was a guy standing there again 60 feet away yeah i think uh um i i honestly talked to the team like they're very open and everything like hey how are you feeling what do you want to do are you wanting guys and just stand in there for a little bit are you guys wanting to bunt like you said are you wanting an l screen um and i was kind of told them like, I, I'm honestly, I'm going to just going to treat it like I'm going to rip off a bandaid. Uh, just kind of get out there and kind of see what happens. And, you know, I feel like you're just going to build up the anticipation so much from doing everything else. that it's going to be harder. So, um, yeah, I did that. And of, of course the, the first ball was like a, a soft line drive back up the middle, uh, after that, but, um, all good. It was one of those things the guy felt really bad and no, weren't nowhere close to me, but enough to make you flinch and everything like that. But, uh, Honestly, it was probably the best thing for me to kind of get it out of the way right from the get go, and then you can kind of settle in and throw the rest of your innings that like out there. So uh, it was just, of course, the ball seems to find you right when you get back out there. Are you punishing yourself by staying at the residence inn? Is that what you're? Like, <laughs> are you? Did you lose a bet to the Royals front office? What, I like the residence inn. Yeah. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I don't. I mean, it's it's kind of like an apartment, right? You got your whole living room. I mean, I got a fireplace here, you know, for the summer heat of Arizona. So that's really interesting. <laughs> but, um, no, I mean, it's fine. It's right next to the stadium. You get in, get your work in and there's just a lot of downtime. It feels like spring training all over again. But um, honestly, I'm just, I'm glad to be back out here. I mean, I wasn't even allowed in the, the dugout at home. So you felt like you were so like distant from the team. Obviously you saw guys in the clubhouse every day, but with this kind of injury, you're not allowed to be in the dugout or anything. So just kind of be on the field with, any kind of guys or just be back doing things like on a normal basis has been great. Does the team have, does the team have like a psychologist that talks through this situation or are they just like, well, whatever you come to us with, then we'll, you know, we'll help you through that. Yeah. I think, um, I don't think I didn't talk to like a traditional psychologist or anything, but most teams or a lot of teams now have like mental skills and, uh, people in our, so we have, a a girl with us, um, Alyssa, who uh, was really great and was always talking to me and making sure, like, how I'm feeling, like, hey, how are you feeling through this, thing like that. But um, I feel like I handle it really well. Um, and it was just one of those things where I think part of it was I think it kind of could be a blessing in a way. Like, I don't really remember exactly what happened. Obviously, I remember throwing, like, the idea of throwing the pitch, and then the next thing I know I kind of – I'm on the ground and then I got Salvi running up to me like yelling me to stay down because I stupidly was like immediately trying to get back up and uh, like I probably was going to fall over again. So um, and then obviously I haven't looked at the video or anything like that, which is I think I'm probably never going to look at it just because everyone kind of told me like, yeah, you don't I don't think you really want to watch that. So um, not really having that full like image in my mind of exactly what happened, I think probably helps like the recovery process and all that thing where you're not really super focused on it. And I mean, it's a freak accident, right? I mean, I've, we've been playing for however long since you're in T-ball and stuff like that. And it's the first time everything, anything's ever like this happened and I'm 31 years old. So just understand like it's something that happened. It was terrible, but at the same time, like it's not something that's super common, but it's unfortunate because you saw another happen to another guy like a couple days right after me. And over the years, like, couple guys get hit but um it's not something you're gonna be consistently worried about like it'd be back of your head sure but like you understand like it's not something that's extremely common rhino how's your personal support system been um wife kids 
mom, dad, cousins, your personal, you know, coaches, people that 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 you speak to on a regular basis uh, since then? How have they reached out more? Have they, you know, just words of encouragement? How have they helped you in this in this uh, grind back to the field? Yeah, it was honestly it was incredible the amount of support, the prayers, thoughts, um, uh, especially with my wife, and then. I mean, just imagine what it puts them through your whole family and support system, like you said. So, uh, I mean, my wife was there. And she's We have a, a 20-month-old, almost two-year-old, and my wife is pregnant, so, like, she already has a lot going on. So the fact that my mother-in-law came up for, like, a week, my parents all came up um, to really just help out any way possible. They understood that I was getting taken care of the best possible way from the medical staff, um, from KU, the, the hospital, um, they knew that, so it was just a matter of kind of helping her and doing whatever they could to help her get through it just because it's it's an emotional toll on everyone and seeing someone like that and going through that process. So um, tons of people reached out. It took me a while to get back to text just for the fact of um, concussion protocols. I didn't look at my phone for like a week. Um, a lot of people I've played with, uh, lots of family and friends from back home, just wanted to reach out and just say they were thinking about me and um, – just the people you've played with over the years. So many people that I've played with in Tampa for the past five or six years, uh, people I've played against, um, coaching staff. So, like, there was a lot of people that reached out that even some of you necessarily didn't know or think about, like other coaching staffs that reached out to, to cue our manager. So um, just the amount of love and support was incredible, and um, I couldn't thank them enough. Ryan, uh, how nice was it not to have to deal with your phone for a week? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh... It was it was definitely interesting because obviously the first couple of days you're like I I just want to sleep I'm exhausted like I I'm gonna I was kind of locked into it and I kind of joked I was kind of locked in a dark room at the bottom of our house like just trying to stay out of the way get some sleep um, really try to heal and then you kind of get those like fourth or fifth day when you're like all right I'm I'm starting to feel a little bit better I'm literally laying in bed all day I, I'm bored out of my mind because you're not allowed to do any TV or, like, you can't concentrate and stuff that long. You're not like you're reading or looking at your phone anyway. So um, a lot of staring up at the ceiling, thinking about things. Uh, but definitely blessed that way. And, you know, a lot of family and people came over to, to hang out and support. But just getting a lot of rest, it was definitely a, a nice change of pace. Ryan, give me the game plan. So now what? Take me through what the next X amount of days or weeks looks like for you to get back on the field. I mean, you know, big league field. Yeah, so it's um, it was one of those things where as soon as I got basically cleared from a concussion standpoint, I was able to kind of do whatever I want, whatever I felt comfortable with, um, as long as my head and everything felt good. So I mean, I've been playing catch for weeks, and I throw in multiple bullpens of, like, multiple ups. So, like, I basically threw, like, a three-inning simulated bullpen last week, and then yesterday I threw, like, a, a three-inning – uh, live BP. So like my, everything was still in shape and everything, especially since I was in the sixth inning when it happened. So it was just a matter of continuing to keep that going. Um, I still have obviously time from, I don't think I can come off until the right before the all-star break technically from the 60 day. Uh, so I think the next step would, is to get into games and then just build up from there and be ready to go. And once they give me the call and say, Hey, we want you back, like be ready to go. So at this point, it's just, I think building back up, um, I've been lifting, running, throwing on a regular basis. Like I said, I threw a live BP yesterday. So I think the next logical step is to, to get a new game. So we'll kind of see what they say when that is. So what's it, what's it feel like to know that you guys are going to go from a zone defense to man-to-man -man here in the fall? Are you nervous about that or are you like, yeah, we got this? Stop <sighs> speaking about the baby if nobody yes, understood I, I, what I was I, uh, saying. I got you there. We're uh, – <laughs> I don't, we're, we're going to see how it is. You know I mean? I'm, I'm sure, uh, I have no idea. I think it's been more of interesting to see how our, our, our daughter, our almost two year old reacts to having a little sibling. We, uh, I'm sure just as you know, a little, little girl, she has little babies and so she loves on that thing. We'll just see how, uh, uh, she, how sweet she is with the new one, but we're excited. I think it's just going to be a, definitely a change of pace. Everyone says going from one to two is the big jump. And then anything after that is, uh, Still incredibly hard, but definitely not another big leap from there. So I think we got our work cut out for us. So luckily, our both our parents live close. So uh, grandparents, I'm sure, are going to play a big part in this. Are your is your wife from Winter Haven also? Because you're from Winter Haven, correct? 
I'm from Lakeland. My wife's actually from Winter Park in Orlando. Oh, yeah. Like Scott, there big money. Go. Scott lives in Winter Park. No, I don't. It's pretty close, dude. You live <laughs> no. like across the tracks from it. No, that's actually <laughs> complete, complete lies. I live in downtown Orlando. Where do you, Winter Park is across the train track. Yeah, 10, 15 uh, minutes. That's, that's, that's like saying you live in New York City when you live in Jersey, or I live in Philly when I live in South Jersey. Just say where you live. I don't live in Winter Park. Don't give me that. <laughs> it would take me an extra freaking 30 minutes to get to your place. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I had a question about okay. Lakeland. So you went, because if you read your bio, it says Winter Haven. So you were born in Winter Haven. And you went to, where'd you go? You went to high school, All Saints? Yeah, I went to All, All Saints right there. Yeah, it's basically Winter Haven. But yeah, being from Lakeland, that probably how that mix up was there. You didn't want to be a dreadnought? You didn't want to be a... I forget that you're an Orlando guy, so you don't really know the area. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. no, I mean, I was de- I went to so I went to George Jenkins right there in Lakeland for the first couple of years, and then transferred to All Saints, All Saints, and um, just kind of worked out. And luckily, I played for some really good coaches both in high school, and uh, it was really cool because um, high school teammate was Carson Fulmer, so I got to kind of see how he evolved over the years, and then became the the stud at Vanderbilt, and then into the the guy he is now. Is is for people that don't know, you went to high school and then you went to JUCO. You went to Santa Fe, correct? And then you went to ODU, correct. Old Dominion. For kids out there, parents out there, explain JUCO. Because a lot of people don't understand. JUCO is not the worst option in the world. People, Of course, everyone wants to come out of high school and say, oh, I'm going to Old Dominion. I'm going to Florida. I'm going to Florida State. I'm going to Miami. But JUCO, especially in Florida, is legit baseball. And the team, the players in the teams are, are really good. No, it's it was unbelievable, especially from Florida. If you're not – throwing 90 miles an hour out of high school you're you're probably not getting looked at by the big d1 schools um and i was a late bloomer so i wasn't like those throwing hard it's like i mean honestly i'm not throwing hard right now either compared to most guys but uh it was one of those things where just give me a chance to develop when we were really good i know now the transfer portal is probably making things a lot different but i mean for a junior college we probably could have beaten most division one schools I personally thought, I mean, we were, my freshman year, we were number one in the country for like over a month and all four of our starting pitchers, my freshman year through like 92 mile an hour plus got drafted. So, um, a lot of really good talent, like you said, and especially in Florida, they're, it's unbelievable how much talent just because of being able to play year round. Um, and it, it really helped me develop and get to that next level of, of going to old dominion and being successful and then getting drafted from there. So, um, I'm a big advocate of it. Um, everyone, like you said, everyone probably wants to go. It's just, how it goes everyone wants to go to that big school right away um but then some people just go there and I'm like wow this isn't for me or I'm not playing so it just gave a lot of guys opportunities for to play right from the get-go either from a transfer standpoint or um just coming in straight out of high school so uh, I really enjoyed my time at Santa Fe um being up there in Gainesville and um I really I still talk to Johnny Wiggs the head coach there a lot so um we definitely keep in touch Okay, now that AJ buttered you up here. What I'm, do you mean? What? No, dude, he's from the area. I was I like area guy. Actually, he buttered you up. Every time someone talks about Orlando or Florida baseball, AJ's like, wait, anyway. All right, so I'm going to put this nicely because we got to do it. The Roy- <laughs> what? After I buttered him up, now you're just going to shut him down. The Royals need you right now. This team is Struggle City. It's it's not a secret. They'll say the same thing. We've had Matt Cotrara on this show. This team is in the rebuild process still. I get it. Um, but they're trying to put a winning formula together. It's been a while. What are you observing? I'm sure you're watching them most nights. What are the guys saying? Like, What are the bright spots for this team for fans to be hopeful about the future for KC baseball. Cause obviously there's some good young players. They just lost Pasquat for the rest of the year, which absolutely sucks. Great dude. Great interview. Really good ball player, but give me your, uh, your spiel on the Royals right now. Yeah. I mean, first and foremost, like you said, losing Vinny is going to be a big blow. He was having a great year. Great hitter. Um, it was kind of great to see him play every day. I think for first and foremost, we've, we've had a lot of injuries, at least of lately, you know, like we're hopefully we're going to get some guys healthy, um, and, but yeah, I think it's, 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 it's been weird because I've been watching from afar to, like you said, cause I'm not allowed in the dugout or so I'm like seeing guys and I think everyone's obviously frustrated with how things are going. Um, but I think everyone's staying as po- pretty positive about understanding that we're not like, 
on a daily basis getting blown out there are a lot of closer games where I feel like we're fighting it's not like we're just giving up as the game goes or anything like that where you, I feel like sometimes you see that happen um, throughout the course of the year but there's a lot of talent especially on the um, from a lot of young guys who are you know getting more and more consistent at bats I think and um, I think just a lot of talent like I said a lot of talent so it's just it's one of those weird things where uh, I haven't really seen anything like this just coming more from Tampa and how successful we've been but um, you see a lot of these young guys and the work they're putting in every day um, it's just it, it's it, it's it sucks man you know you want to be out there to help I'm kind of in a position like you said where I, I'm just kind of having to be there and support as much as I can and hopefully you know get back out there and help these guys uh, finish off the year strong but until then it's just a matter of getting going and hopefully things turn our way okay so now I want you to recite that but in the way that the leader of the squad would say it and that is oh, Salvador no. Perez so Eric Kratz ha- Eric there Kratz is. is Salvador Perez so Kratz can you ask the question that I just asked and we'll see if Garbs has any kind of response here I can't wait for this <laughs> is he gonna do is he gonna do it in he's gonna try impression? or do you want me you don't have a Salvi impression <laughs> Uh, I mean, I want him. I want to stay on his good side. I'm sure he'll take it really well, but I want him to like give me all those calls. So I'm not, I'm not messing with that. That's all you, man. Why, why are you saying this, Ryan? We have to, we have to play the game. Come on, Ryan. Everybody, I have a C on my chest. My C on my chest is right here, and I am the leader. I got hit in the head Capitan. last night. It's fine. It's fine, but it, it have a little hurt, but it's good. So you have to tell the team. You have to get your head ready. Put your glove in front of the ball next time. Not your face in front of the ball, okay? <laughs> wow. No, that was that was absolutely spot on, man. Uh, he's let me tell you what, Salvi something else. And like the, the energy he brings on a daily basis, especially with how the things are going right now, is unbelievable. No, he the guy gets like I've never seen anyone just from like just take a beating behind the plate, just from such a big body and you know, doesn't skip a beat, you know, always got a smile on his face, always working his butt off. So uh, it's been a, a pleasure to play with him. And um, I'm really excited to kind of see what happens with him. But he's he's been incredible. And um, <laughs> I don't know, man, you spent a lot of time with him because that thing's pretty spot on. I feel like I've seen over some interviews that you've done over the, over the years. He reached out to you. Has he seen that? Please tell me he's seen that and reached out to you about that this year. We've sent it. We've sent it. He's he's. He hasn't come on here yet because when he comes on, I want to dress exactly like him. <laughs> and we can be, it can just be salvi to salvi time because, you know, it's always Kuraki, Kuraki. He could never say my name. He said, Kuraki. He, he would call me Oso. He said, Oso White. Oso White. You always, you always there. You never play, but you always there. <laughs> Oh, that's actually yeah. a, that's actually a great bit when he comes on. Just Kratz interviews him and yeah. only talks to only Salvi. Talk like him. So you just hear Salvi the whole time. <laughs> he would get mad. He would get mad. He would he would get this like really like crinkled up face and be like, "Why are you doing this? Why are you? Come on, come on, Cracky, come on, just come on, also White, come on, let's go, come on, let's talk about something." He's got a great voice. He's got a deep, oh, it's like classic. Huff. classic. Grizzly voice. I'm all That's about awesome. it. Well, Ryan, there, good. Finish on a laugh. Great to see you, dude. Really excited to have you back on the field and then get you back on the big league field soon. And we'll talk to you in a few weeks. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Great to see you all. You too, man. Ryan Yarbrough back on FT Live uh, from the Kansas City Royals. We'll see him back with the big league squad quite soon. We have Jeff Fletcher joining us in about six, seven minutes to talk about the Angels. So let's preview tonight's games. Last minute game time. Plenty to choose from. Let's look at some last minute late night action. Thanks to our friends from Game Time. Best ticketing app on the planet. Last minute ticket deals there for you. So if you're like, oh, wait, there's a game tonight in my area. Go for it right now. Hit the app. Download it if you don't have it. If you're a first timer, terms apply. 20 bucks off your first purchase. If you use the code FT Live, I'll give you more on that coming up in just a moment. But first. Who wants to go first? Me. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, and actually, you know what? You get whatever you want today, birthday it's my boy. Birthday. It's your birthday. It's my what birthday. are you doing for your birthday? <laughs> you you flip open game time. 
and you're finding a flash deal, where are you going? I want to go to Houston because the last time I saw Javier pitch, he threw a freaking no-hitter. I was at the World Series game. They threw the no-hitter with all his boys. I Actually, I want to go down there because I want to see Davey Martinez get thrown out at the – like <laughs> before the game even starts. He's going to take the lineup out and he's just, just going to – he's going to take his little colored picture that took up all the ink in whatever printer he printed that out of, and he's going to be like, see, guys, that's what I'm talking about. You guys screwed me over last year in the or in the World Series and – we ended up winning, but it doesn't matter. I printed this out for you. Each of you gets a copy, and by the time he hands the second one out, it he gone. <laughs> that would be incredible if he brings out the copies. No, oh, the Instead field. of a line of he hands him a picture. Oh, yep. for you. That's what, what I'm saying. saying. <laughs> You're cool. I did You're my cool. homework. You're cool. Uh, Jonesy, you got to hit a long flight, but where are you going to watch a ball game in the U.S. or Canada? <laughs> Oh, I got to go to Baltimore. Um, it's an exciting time in Birdland. Splash Zone is live. My boy Hicks is over there looking like a young Adam Jones in center field right now for the last couple of weeks. Um, but it's exciting in Birdland right now. They've, I think they're ahead of schedule, but they are playing hell of hell of a game, hell of baseball and consistent basis right now. I think teams have been people have been waiting for them to like slow down. They haven't. Uh, it's exciting. So um, that's where I'll be heading in a couple of weeks. So it'll be fun. Yeah, it's biased. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Of course, he makes all his picks the O's this year, and it actually works out because the O's are freaking good. They've but, been playing good, man. They're, like they Everybody's like, how are they going to slow down? They haven't, and they got mm-hmm. money. So spend it. Um, they better be, somebody, they better somebody, be aggressive. Somebody, hopefully somebody's over there, gets, gets over there and, and you know helps them out. Starting pitching at the deadline, and they're good to go. Mm-hmm. Where are you going tonight? Uh, I'm going to Jonesy's hometown, San Diego. Well, that's, hmm. maybe that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, because it's San Diego. I don't really care about the game that much, but I'll, I'll sneak into Guardians, watch Logan Allen from the Orlando area pitch. And uh, But it's in San Diego. I mean, I don't know. You guys are absolute. So, you know, I like to go I last. Because I looked at the list. Are I, you kidding me? You are missing the absolute marquee matchup of the night. Cease the, versus Crow? The no doubter tonight at <laughs> 805 Eastern time. Evolving? I'm grabbing a flight oh, you're going to Arlington, That's Texas. why I didn't say that one because I knew you were going to say that because now we have, Wait, we have Jeff Fletcher coming on. Don't here just talk about me. Tani, Wait, Tani. who's on the other side of the pitching here? Okay. okay. I love me. That's, that's a fucking awesome pitching matchup. It is, but I'd rather still be out of me in San Diego. Take location out for five seconds. No, nope, because you said I can fly wherever I want. Of course you can. So I'm going to San Diego. Okay, well, Angels are playing good ball right That's now. I don't want to be inside because I'm in San Diego and it's nice weather. Okay, yes. well, you can hang out outside during the day and then you can go inside. And, and plus, it is retractable. Yeah, they never open it. In it's damn hot. It's 147 degrees the there. People are soft. I, I like the hot weather. It's 147 degrees here and I'm it's good. A different heat, though. Mm, whatever. <laughs> they should open the damn roof. And they always complain about that. They're like, can we open the roof one time? Too damn hot. <clears throat> nah, come on. Anyway, Otani's on the mound going up against Ivaldi. Are you kidding me? Rangers, nice Rangers like slipping a little bit. Angels trying to grab three or four in this series. Yeah. Come Otani's on. Otani's been getting whacked a little bit, though. Yeah, a little bit lately. On it's the year, great. the numbers yeah. are still good. It's, it's, listen, it's probably Low hits, high K. Yeah, you know why I didn't pick that game? None of us picked that game because we knew you were going to pick Otani. But you don't have to do that. You guys can pick it. That's why I let you guys it's go first. You can pick whatever you want. I just was surprised. Nobody wants to go see Otani against Evaldi. Are you I kidding already me? Saw it. You already saw it? What? It's early in the year. See him in a, if, that's, if this matchup is in September, we got it. That's ridiculous. You guys are ridiculous. Anyway, let's run yeah. through what game time is going to bring to the table for you right now. <laughs> if you download the app, Eventually, you'll go into the bottom right corner. You'll hit profile. You'll go to redeem code if you're new, and you'll hit FT Live for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. And if you're looking for sporting events, also, by the way, NBA and NHL season are done, so it's baseball, okay, if you're trying to hit a game. And eventually, you'll click in like this. You'll be like, oh, I want to look at my view. and eh, that was too high. Let me find better seats. <laughs> Um, there you go. That's a good spot. You flip the phone around like that and you can see exactly what your vantage point is going to be. If I was at the game like that and then I flip my phone too much and I go with AJ, I'm like, eh, and then I flip it back towards the field because we're going to a game at some point. You promised me a raise game. We can go today. They're not home today. 
Yeah, that's why we can go. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm, I'm still down to go. So don't be stressed. I mean, they're in Oakland. Uh, yeah, they're in Oakland, which I would have loved to be at that game the other day. Don't be stressed, okay? You can get last minute tickets, flash deals for you, uh, cancellation. They handle it for you. Event cancellation protection is there. Lowest price guarantee, okay? 110% back. If you can find it lower in a, another section and row on another app, because you won't. Snag the tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code FT Live for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Create an account, redeem code FT Live, twenty bucks off. Download Game Time today. At last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, next guest ready to go, right on cue to help me because I know he's going to be watching this game. At least I have one friend. Let's bring on. Jeff Fletcher, who covers the Angels on a daily basis. And yes, we brought props, of course. And he writes for the Orange County Register. You can follow him at Jeff Fletcher OCR. And here it is. Boom. Showtime. Nice. The inside story of Shohei Otani and the greatest baseball season ever played with a forward by Joe Madden. Go to AJ. Give him the single like he always likes. There it is. Beautiful. See, did way, you I think you'd have a model for this? Tommy. See, I would have read this book. I know. Got literally 30 minutes before we come on. He's like, oh, by the way, I have Jeff's book. And I was like, he's like, can you read it in 30 minutes? I'm like, <laughs> well, probably not, but I'll do my best. So I read the, I read the, the insert. Forward? No, I read oh, the, the insert. It took me 29 minutes. And then well, we also, the, it's been on the desk for a week. Fun fact. I just didn't tell you because I forgot because I'm too busy. But anyway, Jeff, <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing great. And uh, AJ, you're right. It is 147 degrees out here. It's, uh, I would rather be in San Diego also, but, uh, once I get inside the ballpark, it'll be fine. Into the big giant air. I mean, they, they say Arizona's like an aircraft hangar. Texas's ballpark is like a three times bigger aircraft carrier. A hangar, sorry. I mean, it, it's huge. You go in, it's a great place to watch a game because the vantage points are great, except for the press box, which is so damn high. You can barely, they're a little ants running around on the field. But it's pretty, it's got good sight lines and they did a good job of it. So you're right. Inside is nice. Yeah. Jeff, um, we got a lot to get to, but I just want to start with the book plug. So plug what you did, what it's about. Maybe give me one teaser on something special in there that we can look forward to when AJ reads this over the weekend. <laughs> uh, well, it's pretty much the whole story of Otani's baseball journey from, you know, growing up in Japan all the way through his first few years in the big leagues and Obviously, we remember those first three years were not all great. There were some injuries, a lot of doubts about whether he could actually be this Babe Ruth of Japan that we heard. And then so it kind of tells you how he did it and how he had the season he did in, in 2021. And I think that uh, to me, the most interesting part is the part about how he ended up with the Angels, because it was really sort of a, an interesting confluence of events, sort of the perfect storm that allowed uh, this incredible talent to come to baseball at a time when every single team could afford him and every single team could take a shot at him. So it was really not like, you know, normally with a free agent, it's just who writes the biggest check. But in this case, you really had to recruit him like you would with a college players. Although I guess they kind of get written big checks too, but that's another story. But uh, anyway, I think that's kind of the most interesting part of, of the book to me. Jeff, I want to ask you about Otani's just the global brand of him now i played in japan for two years and over there he's on every billboard like ichiro um but how has his brand grown especially in the last couple years goes from him he gets comes over gets hurt who oh, is he that good mvp yes he's that damn good always in the cy young now he's a global brand which and we're talking 500 million dollar contract now how is that like day to day with you don't forget you got the game's best player Mike Trout, another stud at Rendon at third base, but how has he just literally surpassed everybody in in just terms of just media global? We talk about him on literally every day. Yeah, I mean he's really uh, gone to new levels. You know he was big when he first got here, but then the fact that he had the season he had in twenty one. And then he did it again last year and then went to the WBC and did what he did in the WBC. Uh, I think his his Instagram followers went from like one million to four million in like three weeks. So I think that kind of tells you how he's really exploded. And, you know, you see him now. He's got more sponsorships. I think he's making like 70 million dollars a year uh, if you include the endorsements. Um, so he's really like 
taken it to to a new level, and it was a pretty high level when he started. Job, Niz. We got the same agent. He don't call me back. I see why. He got all that money. In <laughs> <laughs> don't call me back. It's okay. Just take me to dinner when I see you. You ever ask Nez about Shohei, Adam? All the time. Um, and he just... He, I don't, I don't, I don't even know if he's still married. He's with Shohei so much. I mean, it's, he's a, <laughs> Shohei's a full time job for five hundred million potentially. But he just says, "What a wonderful guy he is." I've been around him multiple times, and he's just the nicest, gentlest guy, always smiling, fits the bill. And whoever gets him is going to be very, very lucky because, again, you get to see him every day, Jeff. But from a fan's perspective, you're getting a unicorn and. You know, uh, uh, this is somebody that's just special. And it's a one of literally a one of one. They want to keep talking about Babe Ruth. But again, Babe Ruth did it against people that he uh, got gas from right before he went to go take him deep. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a different story than Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth did not even want to be a two way player. That's another thing that I think people will find in the book. He just sort of did it grudgingly uh, when his team made him still pitch when he wanted to hit. So that's why he only did it for two years. So different story than Otani. Has baseball screwed this up? Because it took until this year till, what'd you say, like three, 2.7 million extra followers? Like, he's been in the big leagues this whole time. Has baseball screwed this up? And how do we not screw this up more? Well, I mean, I think baseball, is, it's hard to compare baseball players to like LeBron James. Because, you know, in a baseball game, your big star is still – you know, only on the TV screen for like eight minutes out of a game, unless he's a starting pitcher. And when you're on the West Coast, when you're not participating in the postseason, as has been the case for the Angels, there's just not a lot of opportunity to, to see him. And, uh, you know, and then the fact that he doesn't speak English kind of limits some of the, uh, the opportunities for, you know, some endorsements and interviews and talk shows and that kind of thing. So, I think it's just uh, it's just hard to compare to like what you would expect him to be. Uh, I think he's doing fine, and I think he's he's got all that he wants. So I don't think he would complain about it. But uh, if you want Otani to be LeBron James, I just don't think that's happening. But do you know any Japanese? Because I know how to say I farted in Japanese. So <laughs> I learned about ten words uh, when and I, I went there and signed a bunch of books uh, in last winter. So I know a little bit. But wouldn't it be great if you knew Japanese and you could just be the exclusive Otani guy? Uh, you know, there are lots of people who follow him around who do speak Japanese and he doesn't talk to them <laughs> either. So uh, yeah, okay, that's fine. not happening. I am curious about that, Jeff. Do you think that would help? Right. Because I know he's busy. He's got a lot going on, both on the field with two jobs and off the field with the endorsements and everything else. And hey, whatever he's doing, it's working performance wise. But we have heard from other writers on this show that cover the team, too, that they don't really get to know him very well because he's not available often. How often is he available? And is this talked about a lot? Like, hey, can we get five minutes with him more frequently, especially when he does something crazy? Oh, yeah. Trust me. This is a major issue. Uh, basically, we talk to him after he pitches and occasionally after he has a good performance at the plate. And when I say occasionally, I mean like four times a year. So uh, it's not very often at all. Uh, I think it's definitely going to be interesting if he goes somewhere else next year to see how that works out. But uh, as of now, he's the Angels pretty much shield him from uh, from getting too much, you know, uh, have to too many responsibilities media wise, which I think is what he wants and. Uh, you know, I don't think he feels like it's a problem that he needs to get more attention or needs to share his story more, needs people to know about him more. I think he just wants to be the best baseball player he can be and then be left alone. So in, other, in, in that sense, it's perfect the way it is for him. Is this the one thing that could hurt Shohei Otani's value? That like if this kind of thing comes out, like there could be an issue. I mean, obviously you're talking, we'll talk about money about it later, but like, could this be something that some teams will be like, wait a minute, like, you want this much privacy? Uh, I mean, I don't think it's going to keep any team from going after him because he's worth it. But I think it is going to be a topic that is discussed. You know, if the if the Yankees come to talk to Otani, they're going to have to say, like, look, how are we going to do this? And, uh, you know, it's going to be a thing. And I, I don't think it's just a thing between Otani and the team. I think that if you're all of Otani's teammates – 
and you see him skating by and like never talking to the media and all of them have to talk for him all the time. The angels are used to it. They just kind of let it go. But if you're another team, maybe that doesn't go over as well. And so maybe the team would be concerned about that. Maybe Otani would be concerned about how his teammates would look at it. Maybe if Otani tried too hard to, uh, to do more interviews and please more people that it would cut into his preparation. I mean, these are all unknowns. So I think it's, uh, it's just something that is going to be uh, going to have to be figured out if he does end up somewhere else. Jeff, do- doesn't this kind of stem though from trout? Cause trout doesn't does trout trout does more, but he's really hard to pin down too to get some time with also. So isn't this kind of like a, a continuation of, of trout? Because when I go in to do games for Fox, to get Mike Trout to talk to you, you literally almost have to get an act of Congress to get him to – and he gave us five minutes in Houston last year, but only because I knew Nevin. Well, I knew Nevin, so I went to Nevin. I said, hey, can we get Trout to talk about you trying to get him the full-time job? And he's like, yeah, I'll get him, and he got him for us. And all we did was talk about basically Phil Nevin. We didn't even mention anything else. But, I mean, you don't see Trout out there a lot either. Is this the president or Trout and Otani? Well, that's kind of what I'm saying. Is this just the way the Angels do it? They're like, okay, Trout, Otani – you guys just do your own thing. You play baseball. We'll get, I don't know, Anthony Rendon and Detmers and no, not Rendon. Sandoval. Uh, Anthony know. Rendon don't... is harder to talk to than anybody, including yeah. Anthony. Okay, that's a whole okay. other thing. But uh, so my experience with Mike Trout and Neto and yeah, I mean, I, I don't yeah. know. I'm just throwing out names out there. You know, uh, my experience with Mike Trout has not been that at all. I, he's available anytime I need to talk to him uh, about anything, including uh, this is my my favorite Mike Trout story was. Uh, uh, it was maybe in his uh, third or fourth year, and he had uh, struck out four times. And I was kind of standing there in the clubhouse after the game and sort of trying to wait for the tactful moment to go up and talk to him about striking out four times. And he just looked at me and says, Fletch, I know you need to come talk to me about striking out four times, so let's get over here and let's do it. So, uh, you know, right now he's in like the worst slump of his life, and uh, I've talked to him about it multiple times. So uh, Mike Trout is not an issue in, in any way in, in this That's respect. That's great. That's awesome. No, that's what I that's wanted awesome. to hear because I, yeah. I can only speak from my experience. And I know we listen, we go in there for one day. So I get it. He's busy and it's hard to, to so great. I love Sometimes that. you do have people. to wait to get him tomorrow. So for me, that's not a problem because I'm still there tomorrow. But, uh, but he's, but he's always there. Great. That's good. Good on Mike Trout. That's, that's, especially from the stars, you want to hear that. Okay. So then why is he in a slump? <laughs> that's a great question. Uh, he says it's just his, uh, his timing a little bit. He's not recognizing pitches. Um, he says he's just having a little trouble recognizing the spin, so he's not laying off the right pitches. But uh, it's definitely not something we're used to. You know, in the past, you know, we'd see him have like two bad weeks, and then we'd kind of like, oh, the sky's falling, and then all of a sudden he's great again. But this has been pretty much six weeks now of him being like a mere mortal. And uh, his, his OPS for the season is now about 830. He's never been under 900 in his life. Um so there's certainly some some people wondering, is this just it? Is this age? Is this what he's turned into? Or is it just going to just a slump and he'll flip the switch and, and go back to it? So uh, I don't know the answer, but uh, it's definitely interesting to watch. It's been he's been all world for a long time. Yeah. He's only 31, but I'm just sure. saying. You're right. He's also had some funky injuries it, and some stuff. I said to mm-hmm. that, do you think that, you know, because they were talking about moving him to right field, but then they traded uh, Walsh away made no sense but do you think that a conversion to a corner could be sooner than later again he's, he's getting older and he's not jumping into walls it, it, to get him off his feet you can't use the dh because otani you might be able to use it next year when he's gone but you can't use it now but a corner is a lot easier on your feet on your legs especially the guy who's just as big and strong as he is do you think a, a move could be made sooner than later due to the fact he has seven eight years left you want wait, you wait. want those years to be played, and also just that before I answer, who are you talking about traded away? No, not oh. traded. I'm sorry, moved. I'm sorry, oh, moved to moved. the corner. Oh, you're talking moved about moved to a corner. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Angels fans are very Jeff yeah. knows. Sorry, not traded. They're, 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 if if you corner. say one thing off, you, you don't watch our team as much as I do. <laughs> um, wait, they're not trading Mike Trout. Angels Twitter will freak sure. out, so I just wanted to clarify before sure. they all fainted at once and said Jared Walsh wasn't traded. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, okay. Jeff Fletcher just said they're trading, trading Mike Trout. Breaking news! <laughs> breaking news! There was a, a little bit of a discussion about moving Trout to a corner uh, last spring, spring of '22, for about one day. And at the time, the Angels also had Brandon Marsh, who's a great center fielder. So uh, 
that was sort of the, the impetus for that. Now they don't have him anymore, so they don't really have anybody else to play center field. And Trout has actually played like his best center field of his life this year. His jumps have been way better than they were before. He's worked really hard on it. There is still a physical toll, which is true. And uh, like here in Texas, they, they gave him a day off because they didn't want him to play four straight games on the turf. Uh, he does not dive really for balls because it's kind of self-preservation. Um, so, you know, at some point, yes, he's going to move to a corner spot. Uh, but I think the Angels are going to need to have somebody else to play center field before they can really talk about that happening. And as of now, you know, he's still playing well enough defensively out there. Okay, so let's get into the team as a whole, and then that will lead us to the deadline and then after the season. So is this team legit? Are they going to buy their asses off? Because you have to assume Otani's gone. So this is it. You have two generational players together, probably for the last time. If you think you have any chance and you're not trading Otani, then you better buy your ass off at the trade deadline and put together the most incredible team you've ever seen and, and not worry about the future. Cause no matter what, if Otani has gone, it's going to be tough times for them for the next few years in my mind. Uh, well, they definitely, uh, if they continue to play this way and are in the race, you know, at the deadline, I definitely think they're going to try to add. Uh, the problem is, there's not going to be a whole lot of teams that are out of it. And so there's not going to be a huge quantity of, uh, of pitchers or whatever available because even the teams in the central, you know, one good week and any of those teams are right back in it. So uh, just because they're trying doesn't mean they're going to succeed in really getting the guys that can help them. And they also don't have a great farm system still. So, uh, you know, even if they, you know, really go after one of these guys, some other team might have a better offer. But, uh, you know, as for whether they're real, I think, you know, if you go through the whole roster and go, is this guy doing better or worse than you expected? They have a lot more guys who are doing worse than you expected, yet they're still sitting here six games over 500. So I think there's room for them to get better. And, uh, you know, right now they're a game and a half out of a wild card spot. They're five and a half games out of the division lead. Uh, you know, if they win tonight with Otani versus Valdi, that would be taking three out of four at Texas. And then you're going to Kansas City, two against the Dodgers, and then going to Colorado and hosting the White Sox. So that's a little bit of a stretch where they could really get some momentum going. So uh, I think they, they, they still could be a pretty good team. They need their starting rotation to improve. Uh, they need to get Trout playing better. They need to get Rendon playing better. Uh, they need to keep the bullpen the way it is right now. So uh, they definitely have a shot. Yeah, you still have – the Astros to deal with. You still have the Rangers who are better than people thought. Yeah, but then Mariners after this, have played really well, so they're going to come at some point. Yes, because you know their GM's making moves. Oh, he already said. He, did you hear yeah, his comment? Huh. He said Babe Ruth can't fix this team right now. Something like that. Did you see that? Yeah, but still, they got to make. They're making moves. moves. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They got to make. He but said, what can the Angels keep up? Because moves. six games over 500 is good, but what's going to get them in 84 that's 80 what 84 wins is that getting them in no not in the al so i think it's closer to 87 no 87 plus you better win yeah, your division probably closer to 90 you know closer to 90 they're, yeah, well they're yeah. not winning the, i don't think they're going to win the division and it's going to be hard to good he's enough. got going to have three teams i mean they got to play better if they maintain play. this what well, okay jeff so if they can make one move is it a starting pitcher yeah is it a reliever is it a starting position pitcher. player Starting pitcher, pitcher, absolutely. They're, uh, you look right now, their offense. I, I look at teams, you got like three parts. There's your offense, your starting rotation, and your bullpen. And I think you want to be top 10 in two of those and middle 10 in one of them. Nothing that you're bottom 10. Right now, their bullpen and their lineup are both top 10 in the majors, but their rotation is like 25th. So they definitely, and I think the guys they have can pitch better, but they, you know, adding somebody would certainly be that would be where you would want to go if you're if you're adding somebody. So or like Lucas Giolito, Marcus Stroman, are those guys going to be available? I don't know. Those the, If their teams win five in a row, they're back in the race. So who knows? Percentage chance that Shohei Otani returns to the Angels? Well, I'm going to – you guys are going to be shocked by my answer. Uh, I'm going to say it's like 30% because mm -hmm. uh, I think that everybody else in the world thinks it's 0%. But uh, – I think, first of all, I have spent more time trying to figure out what's going on in Shohei Otani's head than basically anybody ever, and I don't know. So uh, I think he is intentionally does not tell you 
what he thinks or wants or believes. So there's this whole narrative out there that all Shohei wants to do is win, and that's all he cares about, and he's not going to go anywhere where he can't win. Well, that's basically based on like two sentences that he said in the last four years. And I think that basically everybody who's ever played Major League Baseball has said, yeah, I want to win. You know, they don't all sign with the, the Yankees and Dodgers. So there's other things that matter. And I think that comfort matters. Uh, I think that having a team that basically bends itself over backwards to fit you into the roster, however it needs to do it, counts for something. Uh, I think not being forced to be in a huge media fishbowl counts for something. So I think all of that stuff adds up to, to 30%, basically. And I also I think it's not a given that the Angels are going to be bad forever. They do have a decent core. They're decent right now. Um, and, you know, some of the other teams that we throw out there, you know, Padres, where are the Padres right now? Uh, the Mariners we talk about, maybe. The Giants we talk about, you know. Uh, the Dodgers are really the only team, I think. I think the Dodgers are number one destination because they're pretty much the only team that's on the West Coast that you can say is going to be a winner every year. After that, it's just a lot of teams that have issues also, plus the uh, the unknowns. So uh, I would go like Dodgers 40%, Angels 30%, Field, you know, the rest of it. So... That's my uh, estimate. No, I think that was good. I mean, that makes sense. It's not zero. I mean, zero is no, harsh. No, no, no. You know, no. that, and I know, I, I see you. We, we get the comments all the time on everything we post. It's Dodgers only. It's Dodgers <laughs> or Yankees. Oh, it's definitely Cubs. Like, okay, cool. I mean, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to cover it. So the we'll be all over it every day. The Reds. I can name I can name a bunch of teams. There's a zero. The Reds have, yeah, the Reds a, have a better chance of giving them the team than giving them the money. You, you have a better chance of naming teams you won't go to. Oh, I do well, think that uh, if you want to if you want to make the whole list, I think it's the uh, all the West Coast teams except the A's and the Mets. I think that's the list, pretty much. No Yankees. I really cannot see him being happy in that environment. And the only reason Mets, I would put the Mets in there is because of Billy Epler. Uh, if he lasts, <laughs> well, yeah, Mets are, really the Mets are a mess right now. Take the Mets off the list too. So, yeah, my my number one thing. This is I truly. What about believe, Vegas A's though? Vegas Does that A's. have a ring for him? That's he could the say, next deal. He could say, "Hey, it's not in Oakland. You can be the star. You can. We'll name the stadium. We'll name it Shohei Stadium in Oakland. Maybe he loves playing poker, like because we don't know a lot about yeah, him. I know he, he loves, loves playing the video craps game. Tape. Maybe he loves pie gal. I don't yeah. know. Craps, blackjack, pie gal. Whatever, maybe he loves a bunch of different things that we don't know about. That's maybe it's stud. But, I mean, Cubs fans think they have a chance. They think no. they're going to spend. Rankings I mean, like, don't spend like that. Uh, it's, I have a hard time seeing that. My number one thing with Otani is he's going to – I think teams are going to be in the same ballpark with him. Front offices, especially nowadays, seem to be in the same ballpark with almost every player. Hmm, that's weird. Weird. But, yeah, super weird, even with the big-time players. My thing is – I, I genuinely feel like he wants to go to as sure of a thing for consistent playoff appearances as possible. And I don't see that right now with the way that the angels were built much better track with Perry there, but it just was such a mess for such a long time. And already tried to be, we always say the helicopter owner, which does not work and put them in such a bad position with money and with how they ran their farm system and what they invested in developing the team. So for me, I think he's going to look at the team that he knows will be in the playoffs consistently. In addition to obviously, yeah, not having to move much. The Dodgers are always a playoff team. And look at their prospects right now. They're loaded again. Absolutely loaded. So that's that to me is what stands out when I hear him. I know it's few words, but I hear him during the World Baseball Classic being like, oh, this is cool, meaningful baseball. Yeah. I think also uh, it, it would make a difference – how the angels do this year, not just what their record is, but how they get to that record. Is it because of Zach Neto and Logan Ohapi comes back and he looks good. And does their bullpen continue to be good with Sam Bachman and Jose Soriano Do Reed Detmers and Patrick Sandoval turn it around? Cause these are all guys that are still going to be around. So you can say, okay, maybe it looks like it could be sustainable as opposed to if they like say if just Tyler Anderson and Hunter Renfro went off and that's what carried the angels in. Then you go, well, that's, you know, those guys are not necessarily the, the long-term future. 
So I, I do think it matters how the Angels do it as far as the way he looks at it. Jeff, really enjoyed this. Our fans love to hear this. Obviously, this is a story that everyone, even non-baseball fans, love to hear the story of Otani and, and his free agency. Go ahead, AJ. One more time for the for the crowd. Boom. And AJ will give you his book review soon. Hey, a, I'm all joking aside, AJ freaking reads. So he will read this book. He read Evan Drellick's book. And Wait, he is it in English? About it in length. Yes, it's in okay. English. <laughs> There's also a Japanese version, too, if you want to practice. There you no, go. I'm, that's uh, I, that's a way above my pay grade. <laughs> Arigato. Yeah. We're better chance with Jonesy. He knows a few words, and yeah, Kraft knows 10 words, so he'll get fart if you put that in there. He'll know that. <laughs> that's it. Jeff, great to talk to you here. Um, we appreciate it, and we'd love to have you back sometime, man. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Thank you. And you can follow Jeff um, on Twitter at Jeff Fletcher OCR, right for the Orange County you, Register. Do you think he ever gets tired of talking about Otani? Do you ever think he wakes up? You should like, have asked. He just left. Well, I know, but we, we time and you guys got to be out. And I think no. You don't think he ever gets tired of it? Yeah. You don't think, you don't, it's he, been six years. But Otani's about to leave and then he's going to have to cover Trout and, and Rendon. Rendon. Well, that sounds depressing. I'm not to Trout. But... I, I just wonder that because. You don't think he's like, man, not yet. I, I want to talk about something non named. I mean, he did, write, he's, I guess he did write a book about him. So, and he's not always available. So, he's still a mystery. It's not like he's talking to him every day. When they, it, it's like one of those, um, I'm going to miss the words. It's a gem, right? Like, oh, we get Otani today. Like, they get excited. It's not like, oh, yeah, here's Otani again. Okay. You know, it's great to hear that about Trout, though. Yeah. Availability. That was, that was a great story. That was good. Okay. So, uh, before we get locked, uh, there's two fan questions. I'll do one during slap hands, but it's your boy sent us a super fan question. So I'm going to get it in here. He said, I enjoy the show. Y'all can really bring a new light to the game. In my opinion, wondering which three teams are y'all most surprised by this year underperforming or crushing expectations. We have three hosts besides me. I don't count it in play. So one of you each gave me the one team Truth that has stood out said. for underperforming or crushing expectations. Who wants to go first? I can go first. Um, my two teams. Obviously, the Orioles are right now exceeding expectations. Um, and the Padres right now, with uh, the third largest payroll, are not living up to the expectations as of yet. Still, you know, 90 games to go. But uh, those two teams for me. Phillies and Giants. Phillies, I think, have underperformed. And the Giants... Not overperform, but I just, you know, in that in that division, in that, you know, environment, I just don't believe in I believe in Farhan and what he can build. So like the you know, the one year deals that he brought in, I think are are really good. I just don't, you know, I just don't know if it's a sustainable thing. But hey, you know what? If the season ended today, they'd be in the they'd be in the playoffs. Uh, but before you go, just because I'll just point out one team now, I have to because fans are talking about it too. And that game yesterday, oh. the Cardinals. Oh, oh. oh. that was really oh. bad. Oh. That is, a, <laughs> that is God exactly awful. what Ryan Helsley was talking about. That's yeah, this will work. This will work. Then this won't, and we lose. This will work. This will work, and we lose. Gallegos, Matt's not going to be a bullpen guy for me. So Strzemski. I went on Cardinals radio last night. I was Ooh. like, nope. Not a not a bullpen guy. Now we're gonna have a bullpen problem because Helsley's out, and now that's starting to crumble. And the defense, I read Ken's corner in the Athletic this morning. The defense is brutal compared to the last couple of years. I looked at some of the metrics. And they've lost. I mean, they used to be the elite defense of the league for the prior two years. Now they you got suck. players speaking out too. You got Arenado saying stuff. See his interview after the game yesterday. No, he he laid it all. He laid a lot out there. You should re listen to it. Give me one thing. He's, we suck, basically, yeah. is what he said. Yeah. <laughs> he pretty he much said, we suck. He was like, don't blame the front office. This is on us. We suck as players. Wow. He was, he was very was, honest. It was it was good. It was nice. So, yeah. Are they, they one of your teams? Are they one of your teams? It wasn't, but it, he, they were close. I mean, the, the teams are – obviously, Jonesy went with teams he played for. Kratz went for teams he roots for. And you? White Sox. <laughs> White, White Sox. White, wait, White Sox. Disappointed. More of a disappointment than the Cardinals? No. Well, you wasted the Cardinals, so I can't say that. No, no, no. Well, the Mets, I was actually going to say the White Sox in the whole AL Central. We left you Other the Mets. than maybe the Twins. Mm -hmm. Guardians, oh, not playing where we thought they'd be. White Sox, not where they thought they'd be. Royals are awful. Mm -hmm. And the Tigers are kind of what we thought. Even the Twins, though, aren't very good. 
Okay, so that whole division, but the White Sox, I picked them over 83 wins. It'll be tough. Homer. Well, of course, but, you know, got to do what you got to do. And then for <laughs> for surprising, the Rangers. Not one person here thought the Rangers would be in first place on June 15th. Not a single person right. here. Astros, Mariners, Astros, Mariners. And the Rangers are going to be around 500. And you tell me, tell me DeGrom's hasn't made many starts? He's out for Tommy Jonas? They got to be up there. Hell yeah. The, the, the Rangers have to be up there because mm-hmm. they're playing really good baseball. And you know what? They're going to do make shit at the deadline. Oh, they can bash. Chris Young's going to make trades, yeah. make moves. And I will say, I mean, I don't know the owner personally or much about the backstory or anything, but he's let the GM play. Yes. And Chris Young's gr- uh, good. He's been good at his job. He's Last thought. night was Semi and Seeger. Exactly how they drew it up. Mm-hmm. Tonight they got Evaldi. Yep. Because they're number one because DeGrom's hurt. Good question. Yeah, the Cardinals are the, 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 the shockingest, biggest one mm-hmm. by far of, of any team. Because I don't, I don't think. Did anybody have the Pirates in first place on June fifteenth? Nope. Scott, maybe. Yeah, right. No, <laughs> no. You guys That's were saying fail. the Cardinals might win it by ten games. Yeah, they're at nine and a half games back of the last wild card spot right now. The worst, the worst, worst team, in the league. The worst team in the National League. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Locks time. Let's do it. <sighs> Your bet MGM locks for Thursday coming at you. But first, we will backtrack. I don't even want to talk about my game. We talked about it a little at the top of the show. You can just rewind, okay? If you're Lately, it's a trend. If you like my pick, avoid it because the closer will probably do something that they don't usually do, whether that's blowing a save like Devin Williams two days ago <laughs> or throwing like my nephew, um, who's five and probably could have thrown it better, uh, like Ryan Presley. So I lost, okay? Even though Houston won, but I didn't hit the run line. And I was in line for it. You didn't hit your run line either. Well, I went to bed. It was four to two Dodgers. I'm thinking, all right, we're good. And then Clevenger, you see Clevenger's arm? Oh, that didn't look uh, good. I hope that's no, not no. bad. That was awful. Yeah, yeah, I hope he's better. Burger had a day, though. Burger had two homers. Dude, the, I had to. Blue uh, Bob. The, there was, there's some people on that broadcast that are great, but there was some the one dude. I mean, he's good, the play-by-play guy, but his his dad jokes on Burger, I was like, uncle, enough. He talked about in and out 80 times. I'm like, do you have a sponsorship deal? Was, Jason Benetti? No, I love Benetti. It was I like Joe the guy. Davis? I like the guy. I think it's Roxy Bernstein. I think his name is on, on which ESPN. team? ESPN. Oh, I didn't watch it. I, 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 I like him. I he's, it. he's a good caller, but I was just like, dude, stop at the dad. I would tell him in okay, person because it wasn't on. There. He's like anyone, anyone, and like Jess Mendoza, like didn't say anything. It's like, all right, dude, move on from the burger jokes. Anyway, I can say that people made fun of my broadcast all the time. Money bags. There you go, Jonesy. You got to lead off. So you're doing well. Five and three. I'm, you know, you can't pick solid. Baltimore because they're playing already. Nope. No, I can't. But uh, I'm going to roll with my man, Stro in the Cubs. He's been on a hell of a run right now. And over his last five starts, best uh, run of his career. I think that is going to continue. So I'm taking the Cubs to beat the Pirates. Wind blowing Money line. Dead I'll do simple. Money line. Wind blowing dead in, too, by the way. Yeah, and it's, that means the sinker's going to play 10 times more. It's plus 135 with Stro. No, it can't be right. You look at run line. That must be run line. There's no way. Okay, someone else go. And Against I'll check Oviedo? It. No, you have to go before me. So, Kratz, go. All right. I'm going to go. I'm parlaying our guy, Matt Boyd, with my buddy, Sonny Gray. I need Matty Boyd to just get me four Ks and Sonny Gray. And Matty Boyd going against the Twins, four Ks. I felt like I could have bought it up to five, but I could have gotten a little greedy there. Um, and Sonny Gray, give me six Ks. So four and six for those two. And that's at minus 115. I had it written down in minus 115, but I think it changed. I think it moved. I'll 130. To... 130? We've got it at 130, now? yeah. Okay, okay. 130. Minus stay, 130, so we're going to put... Stay hot, dude. What do you I, got? I'm going to put... I guess I'm going to put three, 390 up, but I thought I said yesterday for something and i only got 300 off but i don't know maybe i gotta check my text with claudia maybe i said something different okay let's check the books make sure you text it we need official money here i'll go cleveland san diego over eight and a half runs at minus 110 can't wait for aj to fade whatever i'm talking about logan allen uh coming off a clunker against houston 
peripherals are low. Uh, Velo's low. If you miss against this team right now, they're going to bash. I mean, the Padres might hit that on their own. Ryan Weathers, same thing. Low strikeout guy. Cleveland just got blanked yesterday. To me, it just has the makings of 9-5. So I'll take the over on that one. You? I took the under. You're such a troll. <laughs> okay, so the funny part is, if you look at my, my phone, I had the same exact bet that Kraft had. The Sonny Gray and Matt Boyd over strikeout parlay. And I just was like, I don't know. I just don't know Matt Boyd's going to be in the game long enough. And Against the Twins, they're heavy right-handed. So I was like, but the Twins strike out a lot. So I was, and then I looked and I said, Logan Allen's better than you think they are. And the Guardians can't hit a lick, lefty, righty. They're worse against lefties. And Weathers is pitching in San Diego where the ball doesn't go anywhere anyways. So uh, it seemed like an easy o- under for me. And I always, it, it's it's weird if I look back, I feel like we always go, Kratz and the players, we always go over more runs. Over more strike. We always are looking at the positive. Yeah, over is more fun. That's how they get you sometimes. I know. So for once, because and then I saw you were you were betting, and I was like, oh. Wow, because because my because I'm 30 and 23 on the year. Mm-hmm. Why? Because my water weight percentage is so water much better than the white side. Yeah. We'll see. It's gonna be fun. Now I'm rooting extra hard. <laughs> I'll, I'll double down. I'll double down. So right. minus 110. Um, I'll put down $330, please. Yeah, which is way higher than I've gone. Wow, like to be a man of the Let's people. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Put your money where your mouth is. The same thing. Three thirty. Let's, let's race. Let's go, baby. Let's Three thirty each. <laughs> let's freaking go. All right. So let's talk bonus offer. Spicy ball, baby. That's your code. If you're new to the party, sign up and deposit into your newly created account. Download the BetMGM sportsbook app on iOS or Android or BetMGM.com. Place your first bet offer and receive up to a thousand bucks back in bonus bets if it loses. If it does, your bonus bets will be available once the wager is settled. Always bet responsibly. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And right before we hit slap hands, there was one more question. It's kind of a loaded question. I don't know if we have time. Right, let's do it real quick. Adam Lewis asked, because and we haven't gotten your take on this. It's basically official now. Uh, do you think the Players Alliance will make any statement on the Oakland situation? Um, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> I think I'll need to reach out <laughs> to, uh, to some people in, in the, in the players Alliance. Um, does, does, does it really need to be said at this point? I mean, again, does it need to be said? It's like beating a dead horse at this point. It's over and over. My whole thing, I was like, would you make him go do sensitivity training like Kyrie had to do? You know what I mean? It's, it's cause I think it's that serious. Yeah. You know? America, you got to say, African Americans have been here for a long, long time. So, do you make him do read some books and go to sensitivity training, sit in some classes? Um, I don't oh know. no, not that. I know what you're what? talking. Oh, oh all right. my bad. I, I took it another way. No, maybe they are. You're talking about the broadcaster. I, oh, that's yeah. true. I, I didn't know if they were talking about that or just that. No, they're the, talking about leaving. That them yeah. leaving. Yeah, I didn't know if they're talking about that or that the the A's are leaving and. Yeah what the players Alliance has done so well is connect with a lot of the communities that have baseball cities. And now you're taking it out of Oakland. I know what you're talking about with that. And yeah. that's true too. Um, and I, I agree. I think it's, it's been said and things were handled there, yeah. but with, with a team moving and providing a voice here, right. Uh, yeah. That's authentic, which we take a lot of pride into. Do you think that, you know, guys would be pissed about that? Cause there's some guys um, I'm trying to think. I think there's a player or two that are a big part of the players alliance that are from the bay area sabathia probably, uh, sabathia yeah. yeah they're probably I mean, you're taking, pissed you're taking away uh culture you know like uh they took away the chargers from san diego but oakland is a little bit different that's you know where the african-americans left from the south and went to chicago and oklahoma and texas but the ones that went to the west coast went to oakland and it has such a strong and rich uh, African American community, and baseball is one of the strongest games in. It's one of the oldest games, obviously, but dating back for for the early parts of African Americans, the 50s, 60s, Negro leagues, obviously. And you're taking away a lot of uh, a lot of stories from grandparents passed down to, to dads to kids that happened in that area, and it sucks when a team does leave. You know, and obviously we're big baseball fans and lovers, but it really does suck when. Uh, franchise leaves. I hope they do say something because a lot of um, a lot of the best bat- baseball players 
of our generation are from that area. And they have such a great and profound voice and have done so much in the region back to their giving back to their community. So something needs to be said um, because it just sucks when whenever you take anything away from a fan base. Um, I know it was great the other night when they was all sell, sell, sell. Um, but it sucks for the for the economy, for the people that work that have been working at that stadium, the people that count on that job. Um, Golden State already left. The Raiders left. It's 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 tough. No, well said. I agree. Let's hit slap hands. Nice. Hey, <laughs> real life slap hands. Is it firing? No. Oh, just go. All right. So all I wanted to do at the end here. Happy birthday, Kratzy. <laughs> Have a day. And it's Father's Day coming up. This is your yep. time. It's a big time. Big time. Yeah. This morning, this morning I woke up, I got a video from my team. They all put like a collage of a video together thanking me for the season. It was cool. It was it was really cool. I'm a I'm an easy that. crier, so that's, that's easy. <laughs> I tear up. I get sweaty eyes. I get sweaty yeah, eyes. I feel you. I like it. Dude, I, I love it. I love it. We appreciate you here, dude. Every day, obviously, as you know, but you're crushing it. And your questions are hilarious. Almost every day, including your salvi impression. Oh wait, wait! I forgot my hat. I forgot my hat. Oh, Kratz hats. I got this sent to me from the uh, from the Levine, Craig, Cindy Levine fans from and friends from New Hampshire. Uh, this is the Copas de Diversión from uh, New Hampshire. It's the Gatos Ferozas, the fierce cats. Which obviously a Fisher cat is a fierce cat, but this is their Copa Diversión. Pretty, I like it. I don't have yeah, a lot cool. of yellow hats like this. I like yeah. that one. I like the logo. Yeah, I like all those Copa diversity. Me too. I know. I need them all. I need them all because they're those. Those tremendous. they all win, right? City. So Connects, far, everyone he's some good, some bad. Everyone so those far he's win. gotten and shown us have been badass. I agree. That yeah. one's like a badass transformer. It looks like a transformer, like Rise <laughs> of the Beasts. Supposedly, yeah. the Columbus one is. It's coming. Oh, why don't you have it? Columbus brings it. Big, oh. big Matt hasn't sent it yet. Big Matt's yeah. got a lot to do. He's like, Big uh, Matt will hook him up. Yeah. Need hey, the rest of them, though. John D, we'll see you soon. Go handle that situation. <laughs> Pillow fight in full <laughs> force. AJ, we'll see you on Monday. Kratzy, we'll see you tomorrow. And Friday's show, Todd, Father, and myself live at Borgata. If you're in South tomorrow? Jersey and you want to say what's good, Borgata. Borgata tomorrow, baby. Let's go. Wait, are you off again? I'm going to hit the tables real soon. That's coming up. Just the time. <laughs> we'll talk about that next week. But we will see you on Friday for Foul Territory. I believe Lance Lynn will be joining us, among others. So if kids are involved, uh, earmuffs. See you then.